What's up, guys? Welcome back to Big Yogi's Garage. Today I got Francisco what Aguilar. Up, What's up? What's How going doing, on, man? man? Thank you so much for coming, Thanks man. Thanks for having me, dude. I appreciate it. We got, we had, we, me and you, we've had like some beef in the past yeah. and stuff like that. But really, man, to tell you the truth, me and you got into a fist fight, like a really good, like fist fight, right? <laughs> yeah. But to tell you the truth, man, when I got out of jail, yeah. you know, you were a big inspiration of who the, the person that I am today, you know, and I wanted you on here to tell you the truth because like uh, I followed you from the beginning, man, because you inspired me a lot to become who I am through you, uh, Joy Rosales, yeah. um, you know, even like Amadeo, Ruben Rojas, yeah. even like all these guys, you know, all these men, you know, yeah. that I inspired because I inspired to be a certain man, you know, yeah. and then I take a little bit from you and a little bit from right. him, a little bit from Vadi, a right. little bit from from my friends. And I've tried to create this person I am today. So I wanted to I want to always have you on here. And I know that our past has been our past, it's but past. I, I want to always say thank you very much, man. Hey, man, I you appreciate do. you, man. And I appreciate everything you do for this whole um this whole city and stuff man so what do you like our fight and stuff that that was like something crazy right i think that that situation is a combination of a lot of things mm -hmm. and it just maybe we were on a collision course mm -hmm. our lives yeah but a lot of times you're in a collision course with someone and it's not for good at the time, yeah. but then eventually look at us now, right? So yeah, yeah. it's supposed to happen that way. Then you that go through what you go through. You come out and you say, wow, what was that about? I go through what I go through and you yeah. realize, wow, what was that about? Now so, I'm here. You know? So, okay. So, so we're sitting here right now. We're sitting in Toledo, Ohio. I was born in Cuba. You were born in Nicaragua. In Nicaragua. Uh, today, Cinco de Mayo. Today is Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Happy Cinco de Mayo to all my Cinco Mexican Mayo brothers and sisters, everybody. you know, my sons, yeah. you know, because that's the culture. I mean, in Toledo, like a lot of us, you know, we have mixed kids. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my sons are half Mexican, half Nicaraguan. So I try to uh, involve my culture, but oh. I also try to uplift their culture, mm -hmm. you know, so... Shit, we're celebrating today. Yeah, yeah. That's all I got to say about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I want I wanted to have you on on, uh, on this special day. I was like, man, it would be I was thinking it might it would be awesome to have him on there because we're both not Mexican, but right. I I know that you've been confused with Mexicans. I have something in Toledo that ever since I've been growing up, everybody said, Hey, you're Mexican, hey Mexican. So I always struggle with that. I always tell people like, I'm not Mexican. Did you have that same struggle? Man, uh it happened a lot more than it should but yeah. but i get it though i get yeah. that toledo is it's it's a small city yeah there's not a whole lot of people well now you see a lot of people but back when we was coming up in the mm. 90s i mean i didn't need, i knew maybe one or two cuban families yeah yeah and as far as nicaraguan families like back in the 90s mm -hmm. we used to go to this church and there was like at least like eight families we all came from miami yeah. So we all came from Miami because of a church. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We got, we got, we're here sitting in Toledo, but we got to start this, like, the whole thing, okay? How did you even, like, how, what was your life in Nicaragua? How, Nicaragua. Tell, me, tell me from everything. Man, you know what? It's crazy because growing up, grow, being born in Nicaragua in the 70s, I'm 46 years old. Mm -hmm. Nicaragua went through a revolution in 79. Mm -hmm. By that time, I was two years old. We had families on both sides of the conflict. We have families that won the war, and we have families that lost the war. Mm. So, in the, your in your family, on my side of my, on my like, on both, yeah, on my okay. family, yeah, like on my father's side, those were the people that won the conflict. Mm -hmm. And then you would have someone on like on my mother's side that those were the people that fled to Miami because they well they lost or whatever you know, mm -hmm. and they probably f uh, fear for their lives. Yeah, what happened was the reason why we came here from from Nicaragua. It wasn't I don't. I never felt like we came here for political reasons. I mean, we really came here because we were poor. Mm. There's a better future. Yeah. A lot of people came here be, because they, you know, political reasons. Mm -hmm. But the war, after the war in 79, mm -hmm. my family was very poor. Like mm -hmm. they fought and they won. Yeah, yeah. But you only get, you know, you, you get a parade, everybody goes, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go back to your lives. 
and then you're still poor. There's no resources. Right. No you know, the people at the top, it's like anything, any political system, it's always the people at the top that get what they get. Mm -hmm. And then by the time it gets to the people at the bottom, and you're get, you getting crumbs. Yeah, just like Cuba. So whether you win or you lose, you know, if you're at the bottom of, of the society there, mm -hmm. you, you're still going to be at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So we we were very poor. And I remember my dad left a year a year before we did, and oh, he, him okay. and his a couple of buddies from the neighborhood, they left. They went to live in New York. Mm. He lived in New York, and a year later he sent for us. But growing up in Nicaragua, like I was a kid, I, I remember um, they they dug these holes in front of the houses. Mm -hmm. It was like deep. Uh, I want to say like eight or 10 feet deep. I'm, it's crazy because I went to go see my grandmother before she passed away mm -hmm. and it hit me all of a sudden I'm in, I'm in her house and I said, Grandma, you, I remember there were some holes here. <laughs> She's like, you remember? I said, I remember there were some holes. Well, those holes, when the planes were passing by, the people would get in the holes and there were like bomb shelters. Uh -huh. So the kids will, and the families will get in those holes. And they would like cover them up with like plywood. Because of the war and stuff? Because they, they were bombing the city. That was a civil war in between. That the was a civil war between, between the country. Be, between the same, yeah, the, the Contras and the Sandinistas, oh. which are the two factions, political factions. Okay. The Contras were supported by the, the US government, Sandinistas were supported by probably Russia or whatever the other faction yeah. was. So that's not even the part that is saddening to me. The part that made me feel sad was remembering when it would rain, because Nicaragua, it rains a lot. When it yeah. rains, it's crazy. It's jungles out there, so it's raining. So the hole would fill up, and the kids would go swimming in that. It's like a little pool. So it's like you're a kid, but you you don't know that you yeah. know people are dying left and right. Yeah, you're, yeah. Just, you're just being a kid and yeah. going swimming and stuff. You don't realize what's going on. You don't really realize. And then yeah. I, I, that's my memory now that I'm older. And I was yeah. telling my grandma, she was like, you remember you used to go swimming there? All the kids in the neighborhood are like, wow. So Nicaragua was very interesting. And then we moved to Miami. Yeah. My dad moved to Miami. He sent for us or whatever. We ended up living in Hialeah. And you guys came to like the, we, you, you guys traveled We up came, to, we got on a plane and we landed in uh, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. From Mexico City, I don't know, I'm a kid, but yeah, I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. some things. Yeah, yeah. From Mexico City, uh, we jumped in a bus. The mm -hmm. bus took us all the way to the uh, Reynosa, which mm -hmm. is a border town, and we crossed the river illegally. Mm -hmm. I remember my aunt, she was 19, she put me on her on her shoulders. Damn. We crossed the you river. You were like six years old? I was like six years old, yeah. yep. And we crossed the river twice. I don't even know how we did that because I don't know if the river goes like that or mm -hmm. maybe that was another puddle or whatever that yeah, was. But yeah. I remember we got lost. And and we it was a, a group of 16 people. Holy and we, we, we split up. We got lost. Damn. So it was my aunt and, and uh, I think it was one of my cousins and uh, a friend of my dad's. And where's, where's everybody at? And we didn't mm -hmm. know. So... We just kept walking, and I remember uh, we went into a gas station, mm -hmm. and they they's like, "No, you you're in the U.S." Mm -hmm. I was like, "What?" Yeah, sure. I'm a kid, but I'm still tripping because I'm yeah. like, you know, you see, you watch movies and stuff growing <laughs> up. I used to watch The Hawk in, in Nicaragua, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I I just had this that's the old school TV show. So I just had this way of thinking about what the USA was, you know? Yeah. And then you got here and it still looked like, you, like it's, it's, everybody still right, speaks right, Spanish. It's just fields, you know? I'm like, what? But anyway, so... You like you see some buildings or something? It was, it was nothing, man. So <laughs> I don't know how uh, the other family got picked up, the, the other group that remained. Oh, okay. They got picked up by um, immigration. Mm-hmm. Because once, once you get to that, then everybody just splits up, right? Yeah, they, they got picked up by immigration. Uh, we didn't know what to do, so I, I, I don't know if the person at the gas station called someone. Mm -hmm. I just remember we got picked up. Yeah, you know, yeah. We went to, they, we were held. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, and one of them holding facilities. <laughs> we're in a holding facility. Yeah, yeah, before, before the chill, before yeah. you saw kids, yeah. and, and yeah. you know, and know, you know, everybody was talking about the kids. We, I was a kid. I was yeah. in there. So some people were saying that. I mean, that's Hollywood, man. That yeah, no, real. that's not uh, new. Uh, that's been around forever. Yeah, yeah, that shit is real. So, yeah. uh, my fa back then, dude, it's crazy because back then, uh, it wasn't like, I don't know what it's like right now, but yeah, back yeah. then, you pay a fine, right? Mm. Because we were able to prove that we're from Nicaragua. Obviously, the, the, the country is very unstable. Mm -hmm. 
and there was a law called Nakara. It was an immigration law. It mm -hmm. was like, uh, if you can prove that you were from over there, da da da, all this yeah, other yeah. stuff that you had to prove. And that law helped like Salvadorians. Nicaragua, Salvador was going through their civil war mm -hmm. and Nicaragua and I believe Guatemala. Mm -hmm. So, but you had to pay a fine and then you had to process your, the stuff that takes a while, money, all that. Mm -hmm. So my dad sent some money and then he sent, uh, but now he has, he went to Miami because we have family in Miami. Mm -hmm. So he was working, you know, saving up some money. So we stayed in Texas for a year. We lived mm -hmm. with this, this family there. Uh, they, it was, at first they put us in a church. Like okay. they had all these people in the basement yeah, yeah, yeah. of a church. It was crazy. It was mm -hmm. like all these kids, everybody was in the, in, in the basement in the church. <laughs> it was like a Mexican church. And then, well, I don't know how we ended up, one of the families was like, you know, you, you, and you can go come live with us. So my mm -hmm. mom and my sister and me, we went to go live with that Mexican yeah. family. Like sponsors and they try to help out in You the know church. the crazy part about that Mexican family? Mm. They lived two blocks away from my ex-wife, Elvira. Uh -huh. They knew each other. So I go back when I'm married. I went to go visit that family. That's so crazy. That's they knew awesome. each other. I'm like, what? But um, so a year later, you know, we came to Miami. So mm -hmm. that's a whole nother experience. Miami was just, it was yeah. wild, dude. Yeah. You know, you live in what part of Miami? I lived in Hialeah. Hialeah. Was there a lot of Cubans uh, at that time? They, they had, they had that, that, that was when they were immigrating also, right? Well, this is, the second wave is El Mariel. Yeah, you know, yeah. The first one is the 60s when the whole Castro and all yeah, that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the second wave was in Maria, which is in the 80s. Yeah, yeah that's 80s. when it, it was getting... Yeah, that's when it get crazy. I don't... Can you imagine? It's like yeah. everybody's coming. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So um, around that time, growing up in Miami, I remember my, my cousin was a Latin king, right? Mm. And he was like, oh, you got to join, though. You got to join. <laughs> you know, you... You can't let these motherfuckers fuck with you and this mm -hmm. and that. And I, I've never been a gangster. That's mm -hmm. that's the thing about you know, that's the misconception. Growing mm -hmm. up in the hood is like you're a gangster. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't. Yeah. I try to avoid it. You know what I'm saying? As much as I can, I never been that. But yeah. the and then how, city, okay, hold on, hold on. Before you and and then how how do you think that even like how were you raised like that? Was your father really in your life? My Was, father, yes. Your father was a big part of that, right? He right. told you not right. to, right? My father was militant. He was he, he was someone in the guided you to become that, right? Right. So, see, there was no one to tell me that. Like, I got mm, fell in the wrong hands yeah, yeah, right yeah, off yeah, the yeah, bat. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that's that's another thing. You know, when you, I think that you have to be honest with your kids. Like I'm very honest with my sons. You mm -hmm. know, the type of person that I I am, that I have been, that I want to be, and I think that that helps because. You become a human. You become a human being to them. You're not this. You don't idolize your father like, oh man, he's so perfect or he's mm. a superhero. No, I'm a normal human being with flaws, like how you said. You know, yeah, yeah. flaws and everything. But I'm working. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. every day. I'm doing things. I'm trying to better myself. Yeah. You know. And I think that my father was a little too extreme on the other end. Mm -hmm. You know, rest his soul. But he was very uh, yeah, yeah. strict. Yeah, but you know, he did have like guidelines to show you how to do the, things. The and... issue with my father, I think, and that's that's where, because you say, you know, I, I heard you say, you, you know, you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. I had too much of that. Yeah, yeah. I think that there has to be some sort of balance. Okay. Because. You don't want to feel overwhelmed too, right? Yeah, or because. overwhelm your kids. It was like this growing up. Okay, I'm going to tell you how it was. Saturday mornings, man, you get up and you got to check all the drawers. Everything mm. got to be color coordinated. It mm. can't be shit under the bed. Yeah. Like everything has to be like perfect damn near, right? Oh, so he had like uh, Man, he was on like OCD. He was on one, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, you fuck up. You get an ass whooping. Yeah. That's your Saturday morning. So okay. you, you got to wake up before he gets up because you got to be like, you know, you got to fold everything. You got to make sure. Then he gets up and he's like, all right. And when, and when you do good, it's expected. Of course. It's not. You don't get rewarded. You're expected yeah. to do good, but that has a lot of reason why you there are are the man you are because you 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 he was there. You was like I can't get in that. When when your cousins were saying get in this game, wasn't you thinking about your dad? I was yeah, beating be my ass. I'm like, <laughs> he, he, man, because he was not on that shit. You know, mm -hmm. now he wasn't on that, but it, it was tempting mm -hmm. because you kind of again. That's why I'm saying you got to have some sort of balance as a parent yeah. because. This is what happens when you do too much. When mm -hmm. you go ham and hey, hey, hey you, you're you're gonna make people not want to 
oh, I'm gonna go see what this is then because this is too much. Yeah, I'm yeah. just a kid. I'm, I'm nine years old, eight years old. Like, what are don't, you talking about? Don't overwhelm them. You know, it's 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 about communication. It's about sitting with them. It's about saying why it's important to have your stuff, yeah. whatever it is that you color coordinated or whatever the fuck. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not saying my dad was a horrible person, but I'm just saying no, that he know. was said in those ways yeah but yeah that that's just that kind of per everything like he was taught that way probably he, or he was in the military was in the, yeah and then some way you know what i mean they, we got to think we, we are born with zero we don't know nothing we we're don't born. and then little by little we are taught by people's around us to become who we are and then he teaches you a certain way but you learn right okay i love this part about you dad but you went a little too extreme yeah, on yeah, this yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that's how I was able to dial it down with my sons. And like that's what your sons are su- su- successful, yeah. right? So, um, the whole gang situation, you know, joining or not joining the mm-hmm. Latin Kings in Miami, was more out of fear that my dad would whoop my ass. But it wasn't out of I didn't I wasn't curious. It was mm-hmm. just I'm scared. If I do this, I'm gonna get mm-hmm. my ass whooped. Yeah, I, I got older, and then I remember. Um, Getting into fights in Florida, mm-hmm. and it was just just living. Every day was something. Every day yeah. was something. Every day you was fighting Haitians or Cubans or other Nicaraguan people, yeah, and it was yeah. like, oh my, you know, every day was something. It's like, what what's happening? You know, now looking back, I'm like, why was this a thing? But you you put a lot of different peoples from different places, yeah. and like in my school. It was it like a little cliques, like the Nicaraguenses. Yeah, yeah it, it was. They, they were Salvadorians. There was uh, Nicaraguenses, Cubans. There's Haitians. Mm-hmm. You know, in my school, I think there was like four white people there. Mm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember this kid vividly. He had long hair. He was a skater. Yeah. He was a white kid. Everybody else is all Latin people, right? Mm. And it was just I don't even know how faculty teachers dealt with that because at least I want to say sixty percent of all those kids were immigrant. Mm-hmm. It, wasn't nobody speaking English there, dude? It's like, how do they do that? And most of the teachers only speak English, Man, or some are like bilingual. So but. then, not only that, you have, you know, people from Nicaragua are very different. And mm-hmm. I, you know, this is something that me and Vadi talk about. We're very different, bro. We're 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 very stubborn. We're very um. We f- have a lot of. Um, we don't like to feel like we're less than. Okay. So we want to up, up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're. Before you even say something, I'm on your level. I'm even better than you. <laughs> so we're that type of person, yeah, you know. Yeah. And a lot of times, it's, that's horrible. Yeah. And, and, but I think all that, man. Yeah, I, it's just because I can you, think. I think Cubans are like that too. It's like before <laughs> you even open your mouth, I want to let you know right now. You know what I mean? And they're like, <laughs> and now that I'm older and I see it, mm. now that we have this other wave of people coming in from Nicaragua again, uh, yeah. we ha- I have family members that are coming. They're doing it to me, and it's like, ah, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> chill, relax. Relax. You, you don't like, even have your driver's license yet. Relax. <laughs> yeah, and, and but levels. Mm. But but I'm so, I'm like, what are levels though? Too. Yeah. Uh, like if I have children, I have adult children. Someone like our friend Vadi, who doesn't mm. have adult children, yeah. it's not on our level. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't mean he's less than me or of I'm course. more than him. Yeah, yeah. We're just on another level. Yeah, yeah. Like if he's telling you how to raise your son, you'd be like, oh, come on, man. So but like you know. But you. But I don't know if it's a Latino thing, but people misunderstand that when you say that hey, you're not on my level well, what you mean like mm. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you that there are things that i'm on that mm. you are have not reached yet absolutely and it, it doesn't mean you're a horrible person it just means you're just not there of course and there's certain things certain certain like aspects in your life that you've been to that a lot of people have never been to. right Right. Like I've never been to college or I've never did this and then I know that like so there's certain things that I wouldn't even like even like know or even like comprehend the whole system of that. Right. There's certain things that I do I wouldn't know. And then and vice versa. Like right. there's certain places right. that of I've course. been and of then you probably be like holy shit. But right. like but like that like we all have to learn from our experiences and take that and become yeah. like this this so in, 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 so I was gonna say in Miami when you were like when you were you like 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 not in a gang gang but like little cliques they were well, kind of like you gangs, had to right? yeah you you had to hang out with your peoples mm-hmm. that's where you feel comfortable yeah but that's I think that everybody goes through that stage yeah, in their yeah. lives where you want to belong you want to you you're you're trying to find out who you are and especially like middle school, because mm-hmm. I was still in Miami in middle school. Mm-hmm. and But I was bringing up the whole thing about Nicaraguan culture and all that mm-hmm. to say that when we when we came to Miami, Gloria Stefan, the singer, mm-hmm. yeah. her mother was my math teacher. 
Oh, for it's real? crazy because I remember when she got in an accident on the bus. Okay, yeah. She almost died. She yeah, had yeah. that song coming well, out of the dark or whatever. Yep, yep. Man, the whole school, it was crazy because all the Univision, Telemundo, everybody was there. I was like, what's going on? And it, my math teacher was her mom. Mm -hmm. And so they were interviewing her. But this lady, it, I'll never forget her because this lady, uh, there was a kid, a Nicaraguan kid. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is, I don't know, I hope he's still alive. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't seen him. Jaime, right? Jaime was Nicaraguan, but Jaime was not from the capital. Jaime was from the countryside, right? Okay. So his mannerisms are, they're not up to par. You're know, up to expectations, mm -hmm. American standards or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So, mind you, you're in sixth grade, your body's changing. Sometimes you, you start stinking, you don't know, you're not wearing deodorant, yeah. da da da, blah, blah, blah. Well, this kid, he's going through those changes in his life, and mm -hmm. well, yeah, he didn't put deodorant on. And I remember, she's like, why does it smell like that in here? Mm -hmm. Who, da da da, blah. But it was just crazy, right? All the kids are like looking and she's like, what's going on? Yeah. And that kind of that, make, that makes me feel bad. That stuff. Like she that. said, Jaime, <laughs> hey, I come. Oh man. And then Jaime, oh, man. she smelled him. Man. You know what she did, man? She went to the back because in those, in those, I don't know if you went to school in Miami, but in the back of the elementary schools, they have like sinks and stuff. You can wash mm. your hands or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And she made him in front of everybody wash his stuff with soap and Damn. everything. And then he was crying, dude. And I'm like, it made me feel. Like, adapt, looking back, like, mm -hmm. that's fucked up. Yeah, I don't like that shit. That's man. fucked up because <laughs> you don't do that. You don't do that to people. You mm -hmm. don't do that to kids, you yeah. know. But this is, this is something that I, or it would be like something, you know, for the, I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I think I told Vladi this. For the longest time, <clears throat> I had issues with Cuban people. Mm -hmm. For the long, I I'm over that, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm here with you. You know, I yeah, got yeah. love for my peoples and everything. But for the longest, Indio Pataraja, da da da, which is, these are very bad things to say to people, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, from this is from, from all the way from Florida, from Florida, from yeah, Miami. Yeah. Mind you, we're the new immigrants, so like mm -hmm. the the people that have been there 20 years plus, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, they see us and they're like, mm, you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah, we do come. Very rough. We're very rough. We don't know mm. nothing about the U.S. We don't know the customs. We don't know what's happening. None of that. Yeah. So, you know, well, what's the matter? They don't. You, you don't. They don't teach you how to tie shoes in Nicaragua. You don't got shoes in Nicaragua. That you know, mm. little comments like that. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like you, are, like people you, picking on you and shit. You, but these are adults. All these are adults. These are adults. Like teachers and like. Or like I remember going to my 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 friend, one of my my best friends, bro. He was a Cuban kid, man. Mm. Eric Fiallo. He's Retired millionaire in Miami, no lie. I see him mm. when I go down there. But his dad, man, it's crazy because his dad was mean. Just like one of them fucking assholes. Just what yeah. what is looking back? Like what is wrong with this? Why'd dude? you do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like crazy, but that was my experience. And I, I did develop some sort of like resentment. Yeah. Like, yeah. Man, I can't stand these. Towards the Cubans. Yeah. I, I just, so then then when me and you got into that fight, you was like, I mean, fuck these. But but before that, <laughs> before that situation. <laughs> I remember, because I met your brother before I met you, Ricky, mm. and I met him through Mike. Yeah. Oh, little Miguel. <laughs> I met him through him. I met Ricky. Mm. The first time I met him was when my father passed away. Ricky went to my house with Mike. They were in a the bike. They mm. were teenagers. Oh, they were kids. They were kids. Yeah, okay. That's, that's when I met him. Mm -hmm. And Mike was like, oh, that's my boy, Ricky. Like, oh, okay. You know, and my, I remember they had just taken his body, and we were in the living room. My mom was crying, and then, uh, and then yeah, he... Uh, he, he said he's Cuban. I was like, oh, okay. But you know, you're going through this situation. You're mm -hmm. not really paying attention to that. But Ricky always was cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, he always had this smile. He was, it's smiling. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that that was the whole Cuban thing. Like, mm -hmm. then I remember running into you. We used to play football, mm -hmm. and I, I never felt that. I don't know. It just like, yeah, it just went away because other things happened. Yeah, Other yeah. things took, you know, you get, you have kids, you get married, your, yeah, your yeah. father passes away. Now you ain't thinking about that no more. That, mm -hmm. that was more like coming from Miami, moving to Ohio. Yeah. So once high you, school years, you know. So what once I mean? you got in Toledo, that's when you, you started high school and you yeah, started yeah, yeah. like, tell me a little bit of like, 
uh, leading up to my mining your fight in Toledo. Okay. Because we're going to talk about the fight in a minute here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But leading up to actual fight, how did you, how did how, what was your journey from Miami to Toledo, and our, or what happened from there? From from Miami to Toledo, we come up here because, like I said, there was um. We had a a godfather, my my brother's godfather. Mm-hmm. We we grew up Catholic, so my brother's my my brother's godfather. He was living here in, in Toledo mm-hmm. with his wife and kids. And he told my dad, um, my dad's uh, work permit had expired. Okay. He, he wasn't a resident yet. Mm-hmm. Just he had a work permit. Yep. It's like had, a year to year work permit. You had to go renew it. Pay like 400 bucks. Get the, I know. I, I. <laughs> so his work permit had expired. I remember yeah. this vividly because my dad was like, we're going back to Nicaragua. Like my work permit expired. Like if they catch me driving around, we're done. Mm. So we're just going to go back to Nicaragua. Okay, yeah, because there is some that expire indefinitely or some that you can renew. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's over with. So, okay. So we were getting, getting ready. My dad started selling stuff. Mm-hmm. We, we're going back to Nicaragua. It, you know, by that time, the war had ended. They even had elected a female president. Yeah. Uh, Nicaragua was m- more democratic. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's feeling like, you know, everything's cool now. We, I guess we can go back home or whatever. Mm-hmm. So when he... We were selling things or whatever. He started talking to my uncle here, and he was like, look, they don't, immigration don't even fuck with you here. Mm. It's Toledo. This 91, bro. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody thinking about. He's like, Ain't no, you can get a job here. If you have a social security card, you can get a job mm. here. And then my dad's like, well, how do we, where, do we, where am I going to live? He's like, I'm, my uncle told you can stay with me, but there's this church. There's a Nicaraguan pastor here, mm. a Baptist church. And he came from Miami, and there's like five or six Nicaraguan families that he brought. Mm-hmm. So he's he knows how to go to the welfare office and find people um, food stamps and everything. Yeah, yeah. The whole nine, he's going to put you on type of mm-hmm. thing. And then he's going to help you find a job, and then you can go to Cleveland and talk to immigration there. He knows a lawyer that it's a Puerto Rican lady. Mm-hmm. She does the paperwork, and oh. you can apply for your residency and da-da-da. Mm-hmm. And we ended up coming over here. I, I went to Woodward my freshman year, mm-hmm. and just weird, man. I thought I was in like what high school, um, three o'clock high, or <laughs> what was the other movie uh, yeah, Teen yeah. Wolf? I yeah. thought I was in one of those movies because it's not Miami now. Yeah, yeah, it was there, a whole different vibe. There's Latinos, but they don't speak Spanish. Oh yeah, like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, yeah. like Hernandez Rodriguez, like you don't speak Spanish, and yeah. in Miami they they got a name for that, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And, and over here it's like normal, so it's like that was culture shocking to me, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I met Mr. Luna. I don't know if you, you ever met him. Yeah, he's from the Way said, High School. Yeah. yeah, but he, back then, he used to take kids from Way High School and Woodward, Latino kids, mm-hmm. and take him to Grand Slam. I don't know if you remember that place. Mm-hmm. It's like a basketball thing. Yeah. Was it so, on Woodward Road? Yeah, or something? Yeah. yeah. And then, like, he would buy pizza and stuff. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. it's a thing that he did. And then I met some other people like that through that. And It's like a Latino. Yeah, health like thing. a youth. Yeah, like a outreach or whatever. Okay, yeah. yeah. When I saw him do that, I always wanted to do that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's working with kids. Mm-hmm. It helped me a lot because if I wouldn't have done all, none of that, I wouldn't have met anyone. I would have never felt comfortable. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I would have dealt with my life or what kind of problems I would have given my parents because now I'm older. Mm-hmm. You know, now it's not about I'm, I'm, I'm scared of my dad. Now I don't give some yeah, fuck. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm 17, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. Back then I was 12, 13 when the whole gang, hey, you, you should get down with us. Now I'm 16, 17, like, what? I can do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. But because Mr. Luna's program kept us occupied and doing things, mm-hmm. to, that's what kids need, you know? They, yeah, need to, yeah. they need to be doing something. Yeah, yeah. Because when you don't do nothing, that's what they said, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Yeah. You ain't that's, doing nothing. That's where the gang people pick them up. And they, hey, you're not doing nothing. Come over here, help and me And they out. identify that. Mm-hmm. Just like anything. They're like, yeah. they're like scouts, just like yeah. a baseball scout or... You know, so the big homie gonna see you doing nothing. Like, you know what? You ain't come, doing, come, come over here. I put you to work. I put some money in your pocket. Da da da. Yeah. And you a kid? You're like, what? Yeah. You know, and that's, and I'm glad that Mr. Luna was able to mm-hmm. have that impact in my life in that sense. So Mr. Luna was a big part of you, like being a successful, going to college, of and doing all that yeah. stuff. And He's like, like a mentor. Um, and like you said, you know, like my father. You know, everybody has a little bit of something to do with your there is no self-made people are talking about the self-made yeah, someone believe believed in you at one point in time and you should be grateful mm-hmm. 
Because there's people that look the potential in you and look the other way. Yeah. And there's people that look the potential in you and will invest in you. And those yeah. people should be grateful. Yeah. That whole self-made shit, I'm like, whatever, man. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what happened with me was like when I was like uh, like in ninth grade, I, I went to Wei and he was like one of the teachers yeah. that I've, yeah. I interacted with. So what happened, my family got raided into this big drug conspiracy yeah. right when I was a freshman, right? Wow. And, we, and my stepdad, all my grandpa, my uncles, everyone went to prison on the same day. Damn. So I ended up quitting school. I went, my, my mom, me and my mom went to the office and I dropped out Damn. in ninth grade. And I, and I got a job at Mommy Bay Brewing Company at the thing as a buster dishwasher. And that's what started like wow. my like, I just had, I had, to, I had to go a different route in life because my mom and I, and guess what? I only, they would pay me on Friday and I would take only $50 for myself and I would give the rest to my mom. And then from there, my mom and me ended up, you know, like I was like the big brother. I was the yeah. oldest one in my family. Yeah. And we had four other little kids. Yeah. So I had to like just step up and become like the man of the family. Yeah. And I, but I always looked at people like you, right? Like I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you were like, because the thing is you kept going in high school, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You, yeah. How old are you? I'm, I'm 46. 46. Okay. You're three years older than me. But I remember you being going to college. Yeah. I remember like Joy Rosales and them. Mm -hmm. I remember you guys, I don't know, you went to UT, right? Yeah, I went to UT. So I remember listen, hearing about you guys going to UT at the same time. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about when, when I'm supposed to be in high school, yeah. you guys are in college. Yeah. And I'm watching. No, I think Jose is uh, younger than you. He's he's, oh, like, or he's, or you're he's maybe age? a younger, yeah, yeah. a year younger than me. Okay, yeah, but yeah, but we. Did but you guys ran the same circles. Yeah, I, I was, you know yeah, what I mean? We was doing that, yeah. You know, and uh, Miguel's little brother, Robert. Yeah, Rob, yeah. Steve Johnson. Yeah. You guys are a little older. Yeah. But like, I seen it from afar, and I was like, man, that would be cool. But I'm a, I'm already in, the, I'm in this struggle right here. But I always like, I had, I had an eye on you guys. Because little Miguel was my friend, right? Yeah. So I seen you guys when you guys do the rapping. Yes. <laughs> remember you guys, you guys, I remember all that. that you know what I'm saying? crazy, yeah. Like, I remember that. I remember you guys and I always, like, admire that because I was like, look, they're doing something different. Right. I'm in this world. This is the world I grew up in. But that world is cool as fuck. Like, I wish that world was like, I wish, because sometimes you're born into something, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have a choice. You're born and your family all sells drugs and everybody's like, my whole, all the women in my family are church. All the, all the men in my, in my family, this is not now, not now. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the yeah. past. But that's the, all yeah. the men so drugs, all the women were in church. So it was like, where do I go? I was, I, I went to church with the girls, but I, when I was like 15, I jumped out. And of then, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like our roads, you know, led like, like the, like collided, I think. Like, and, and I think it has a lot to do with our environment too. Cause. Yeah. So yeah, so I went to I went to Wait, graduated from Wait. I met my ex-wife in I, in church. I met her in church. Okay, yeah, I was I was going. I met her in church, but we were still in high school, so we mm. were going to school together and everything, you know. So she she ended up going to that same Nicaragüense church. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. So her dad was uh, the co-pastor. So the, mm. the 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 main pastor was the Nicaraguan guy. Yeah. And her dad, so her dad would got all these Mexican people from the North End and uh, mm. to go to like, his family and all. So now the church becomes this huge thing, man. It was like very successful. You had like mm. all these people there, you know. And it was just Latino, not. Not all Latino, one. all in Spanish. It was so it was awesome. It was like a oh, family. It was yeah, like yeah. we we had food on Sundays, and you know the kids, the teenagers will do will go places, go mm. to Cedar Point. I mean, we had a lot of fun, and that's that's how I met her. Mm. And she went to Way High School with me, so I you know we uh we gra I, I graduated. Mm. I grad I graduated from Way High School, and. Well, I think that summer we started getting more serious. Now I'm supposed to be an adult or whatever. I don't mm. know what I'm doing. I'm just, I just got a girlfriend. I'm happy. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I got a little car and stuff. You know what I mean? So, uh, well, she got pregnant and I had to tell my dad. <laughs> mm. And man, he wasn't having it, man. He was like, well, now you know what to do. And I'm like, yeah. uh, I don't know what that means. So now I got to go talk to her dad about it. Oh my oh, God, that was another yeah. thing. Because this is a very religious person, man. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like... I just, I just remember he went off on her, man, and yeah. I'm just sitting there like, because I'm still a kid, man. Mind you, I'm only like 19, 18 years old. She's yeah. 17. She's not even a, an adult yet. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there like, what, man? You wanna... I'm like, oh, my. But they, the lay, they let you guys have this little uh, relationship, right? Or... Man, what? no, he was like, in three months, you got to marry her. You got oh, three months to marry oh. her. I'm like, what? 
Yes, we're getting married in three mm. months. I didn't even know what to do. So I started getting, I got all these jobs and shit. I was working, all these jobs. I was doing odd jobs. I was working with a moving company. I was working at a, yeah. a paper factory. I was doing, I, man, I had all these crazy jobs because I wanted to, you know, I'm gonna, I gotta pay this dude. There was a Mexican dude that went to her church to cook. He was gonna cook the whole mm. thing. And then I had to pay for the cake. And then yeah. I had to go pay for this dress. And I, so I'm doing all this shit, man, at 19. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. You're like, man, I gotta figure this out. So we made it happen. We get married and stuff. It was an awesome event. You know, my dad was there. But if, if you watch the video to that wedding, it's crazy, man, because we were so young. Mm. We, were, we were little kids. Now that, man, we're kids, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's where our situation came from or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this is where the whole thing where you, you think about, man, you know, they, they doing it, you know. Because I, I wasn't your traditional college student because mm -hmm. I was married. So, mm. and I was working all these damn jobs. Yeah. But I go to this place, they're doing uh And were you a little older than most yeah. college students too? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm like 23. Mm. People are like, like Jose Rosales, he like yeah, yeah. 18, 19, 20 oh, maybe. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm old, I'm 23, married yeah, yeah. with kids and everything. Mm. So I went to this uh, Martin Luther King event mm -hmm. and I saw, this, I saw this girl, a real pretty Mexican girl, she's talking and, and I told this dude, who is that person? They're like, oh, that's the president of the Latino Student Union at the University of Toledo. Mm -hmm. what, what's the Latino Student Union? Well, if you're a student, you know, this is a, a, a organization that, you know, works with Latino students and we go out into the community and we you're promote like, wow. culture. And I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do that. You know, well, you got to you got to go to school. Well, my thing was, I, I didn't, I didn't have my residence card. My mm -hmm. father passed away and in the middle of everything, all that stalled out. Mm. So I go, I go to the uh, financial aid office and said, you got your residency card? I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't have one. She said, you got to have one. So then I went, got my residency card. By the time all that, then I was able to go to school. Mm -hmm. I want to do all these functions. Um, banquets, dress up. Mm -hmm. I run for president of the Latino Student Union. Mm -hmm. Nothing but Mexican kids, you know. There was like a Colombian kid. And maybe two Nicaraguan people, and then Jose, and then Eastside people there. Now yeah. they they had they had my back. We got you this and that. And then when I went in there, and I said, you know what? I, everything started because the scholarship. Mm -hmm. The way they wrote the scholarship is, uh, LSU had had a scholarship dance mm -hmm. every year, but only Mexican American kids could apply for the scholarship. Uh, okay. So I went and I said, we're not doing that no more. Yeah, yeah. Latinos. Yeah, you need yeah. to apply for that scholarship. Yeah, because it's the Latino Student Union. Before that, it was called Mecha. Mecha. Mecha is a it's a Chicano. Mm -hmm. It's a Chicano organization. It was it was it was founded in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Then I don't know if you know Josh Flores. No, I never heard that name. But he's a he's a teacher at Wait Down. Okay. And he's oh um, yeah, he had an interview with uh, Valdi one time. Yes. Okay. Josh yeah. Flores, he was also president of the Latino Student Union at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Josh Flores changed Mecha to Mecha LSU to mm -hmm. try to incorporate because Josh Flores joined a fraternity mm -hmm. that had not just Latinos, they had blacks, some whites, mm -hmm. and so he wanted to bring his peoples into the organization and have them apply for the scholarship. You know, okay. Which is, so he was. He did that part. So by the time I come into the situation, like years, like a couple of, maybe three, four, five years later, mm -hmm. and I'm president, the thing is called Mecha LSU. Mm -hmm. So then before I was president, Steve Johnston was president mm -hmm. of the Latino student. Steve, yeah. his mom is Mexican. Mm -hmm. His grandparents, they, I met them before they passed away. Yeah. They. They spoke Spanish. They was watching novelas. Yeah. The lady was watching novelas. I'm like, what? <laughs> I sat there and I was Steve talking looks, to her. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was Steve like, Steve don't look nothing. No, right? I'm like, what? It, it's, it looks like Mr. Clean. <laughs> so Steve, I like Esteban Guardiola. And they, you know, ah, oh, conoces Esteban? I'm like, what? Yeah. Steve is Esteban yeah. Guardiola. That's his, that's his Spanish name, like yeah. Johnston Guardiola. You know, uh -huh. so <laughs> when Steve was no longer president. And mm -hmm. I become president. And remember, there was some tur turmoil with the Mecha LSU situation between the founders. Mm -hmm. Now they're old school. They're like all community leaders. Yeah. Steve is no longer the president. I become the president. They, the founders call me. 
and they say, hey, Francisco, we want to meet with you. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk to you about the future of Mecha, LSU. Mm -hmm. And I say, all right, cool. So I go meet with them, and then I sit on the table, and there's like OGs there, you know, the mm -hmm. ones that founded it in the 70s. And they was like, you know, we're glad that we finally got a real Mexican to mm -hmm. be the president of the Latino. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I said, well. you like, slam the brakes. I said, well, you know what? I'm not Mexican. I'm from Nicaragua, and I'm getting rid of that Mecha logo mm. and all that. And all, everything Mecha is gone. Man, they gave me the look, man. They were pissed. Yeah. I said, I'm getting rid of all that. Man, we went. When I tell you I went to war with these people, mm. we went to war. I mean, we, we had the city of Toledo, University of Toledo, us, we had students come in and protest and all that mm -hmm. because they wouldn't want to get, get rid of the name, the Mecha part. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't because they hadn't paid dues, because you had to pay dues, this is like a national organization, mm -hmm. Mecha is. They hadn't paid dues in years. Mm -hmm. That's the only way they got rid of the name, and then it just became the Latino Student Union. Okay. And, that's my, and that was my, my legacy there, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, because... Now that my children, if my children have, you know, when they have kids or whatever, they can apply for a scholarship. They don't, yeah. You don't got to be. As it's so outrageous that they would, they would, only for this. We are promoting the, the culture. Of course, you wanted it to evolve and grow. I mean, nice everything changes. Stuck, like, yeah. we're not in the 70s no more. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, and, and so that was my thing with that. And, but in the middle of all that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I congratulate. Thank you very much. No. Because not only that, because my daughter goes to UT and I'm sure that Tell her to uh, apply for that scholarship. a lot for of real. those scholarships, she has applied for a lot. Well, so Latinos, things like yeah. that help. Uh, yeah. Because my daughter's for real. Cuban, you know. For real. Yeah. So thank you. So. Sorry. No, no. In the, in, in, in the midst of all that, you mm -hmm. know, I, I'm doing these things, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm married, though. Remember mm -hmm. my marriage fucks up because uh -huh. i'm doing this i'm doing all this yeah yeah this is the this is the price that people sometimes don't you know like you you pay the price yeah you had a young marriage we all pay a price mm -hmm. people don't think about that you know what i mean and it's like not only that you all of a sudden you're exposed to different things that yeah. you weren't exposed because you were too busy working like 10 jobs mm -hmm. and like wow you mean to tell me i can live like this mm -hmm. or i can i can influence people i can advocate for this person or do this or do that mm. but instead i'm not taking care of my family at home because i'm doing all this crazy shit it's not crazy i mean obviously you know it has its benefits and everything but mm -hmm. there's a price and like that's when uh things didn't start not working out there was there's a conference in chicago called the uh, latino no hispanic leadership conference mm -hmm. for all young college students of mm -hmm. latino you know from all over florida state miami university boston all everybody we would go, we would get invited to that mm -hmm. conference, LSU here in uh, UT. That conference always happened on Elvira's birthday. Mm -hmm. I, I was never there for four years. Yeah. And it, it's horrible. Uh, of you know, course. and you know, it's it's a horrible thing to look back and say, damn, I was fucking up. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the experiences and all that, and yeah, meeting people and, and, and getting to meet, you know, presidents or whatever the hell I was, you know, was doing. But it's like, you know, you're you're neglecting things that eventually you know i know are and more I, important and i understand you because if you like i i'm going through this right now if i want to work out at four in the morning and do all this guess what there's going to be times where i can't go do something with my wife because at nine o'clock at night i'm dying tired mm -hmm. i've been mm -hmm. i've worked all day so there's things if you if you focus so much on this stuff there's things that lack over so, here so i think that the key is balance Mm -hmm. But you can't balance. is hard to find when you're young, dude. You get yeah. you get sucked into into the you fall for it. You the know rah I mean? rah of life. Yeah, man. And it's like, oh my god, I'm dressing up. I'm wearing a tie. I'm mm -hmm. meeting people. But you know, you're I'm neglecting my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, looking back, you know, it was tough because mm -hmm. once that happened, you know, once she she was used to tell me like. Oh, you're never here. You haven't been in my. We haven't mm. spent my. You haven't spent my birthday with me, and I don't know how long. And I'm like, well, you know, this is gonna work out. Da da da. You know, I'm justifying whatever. You know, I'm young because I'm mm. having fun too. Though I'm not gonna. Even, it's not just work, man. I'm kicking yeah. it. You know. Of course. So, yeah, she was like, I'm done. I'm like, damn. Mm. Well, I'm gonna kick it even more. Yeah. This is around the time where oh, I want to be a rapper and all yeah. this crazy shit, you know. And then that led to more drinking and going out, hanging out. Now remember the hood and all that. 
it brings you back, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you're in this on this element and this level in your life where life sucks. And you're like in a dark area in your life. Very dark. So this is when you and I, mm-hmm. that, that's the collision course. Yeah. Because even though I'm, I'm doing all these things, it led me to this moment mm-hmm. where life is not fun. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not, a, it's not, I'm not in a good place. And how did, and okay, so what do you, you, you want me to start? How, what do I, okay, so, so, you want me to start, you start. The, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you my, uh, my yes, story. Because we, bo- we probably both have a different it, story. It, it, well, that's what I, th- yeah, yeah I, I'm so, thinking that. So, we don't, don't, we don't say no one's names. No, we don't say names. We let's don't just, say names. let's just yeah, go yeah, with yeah. our story from yeah, what yeah, we yeah. remember. So, in the, in the midst of me kicking in and just dealing with this. It was, okay, hold on. It was German American Festival night. That night? Yep. Okay. Because that's where I came. I came from the German American Festival to where you were at. Okay. Or wherever. We met at the same spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah. So in the midst of all my dark moments or whatever, Mm -hmm. I met so many people, women, whatever, whatever. And I remember meeting this girl. I really don't even remember her name, to be quite Mm -hmm. honest. But this person was talking about... Oh, I'm gonna make some money, and mm. I'm gonna be a super. I'm gonna be a model, and I'm gonna go. You know, she was just talking, but I don't know why I was fed up. Again, I'm in a very dark place, so like mm. I, sometimes I had I had zero tolerance for people that just la la la. And you know, I I think I it was after drinking, we went through freeway or something. I think I was with Rosales, but and you know, and, I, and I told Rosales, man, I'm sick, I'm sick and tired of hearing this person, mm. you know. And I said, let's roll out. And she was like, well, nah. I said, you know, she went off on me. I said, man, yo, I'll, I'll go off on her, whatever. I forgot all about it. I left. We left. F- fast forward three weeks later, I'm with uh, Johnston. And we were downtown. We were downtown then. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's go get a drink. Da, da, da. All right, let's go. I'm, but yeah, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking like I'm having fun. Mm-hmm. I'm getting fucked up. Yeah. Like I'm getting fucked up. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not aware of my surroundings. I'm just. Life is bad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's. 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 It's not. It's not. That's why I tell my sons. Like you know, we used to throw parties and shit. He was like, man, yeah, I was kicking. I said, it wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. It's just life. It's like you think that this is what you got to do to, but you're not really handling it the right way. Mm-hmm. Like it's not. I'm not having a blast. I'm not just yeah, you're trying to it. get over another day, trying to survive another trying day. Trying to get over it. Because I don't what feel, really hurts and shit. I don't feel right. I don't feel right about the way everything ended with my wife, and I don't, I'm not happy, mm-hmm. you know? So anyway, so he was like, hey, um, you want to go with me to Eastside Cantina or whatever? And I said, yeah, I don't care. I never had issues with nobody. Mm-hmm. I, I never never had issues with, except for that person that when that, that happened or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm like, so he went inside. Don't know what he was doing. I never even, I don't ever get involved in, in situations with him on that level because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm his friend, not because of what he does, but because I'm his friend. You know, yeah, you have yeah. friends like that where you're like, I know what you do, but ain't got nothing to do with me. Just don't involve me. Mm-hmm. Do what, That's on you, yeah, yeah. you know. But um, he goes inside. I say, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to go take a piss real quick. So I go behind the trash can. And I was coming out. And then this person came out. Oh, there's that mother, da, 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 da. and I, I'm I'm fucked up, but I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, there, this. Oh, you gonna see now? I'm gonna get my boyfriend. I'm like, Who is this person? I, I'm thinking and like, oh, you think you better than me? Cause I, you work at the welfare office. You ain't shit. That mm. she just kept man. She was, Brrr. and I'm like, man, whatever. I say like whatever, cause I don't know who this person. I forgot. I totally forgot about that whole incident <laughs> at, at Freeway or whatever, wherever that was. And that's when that whole situation came back out. When yeah. I think you came out or someone else came out. I don't yeah, know. I can't. I, I, all I, okay, so. So that's my, and then yeah. the, that happened. And then, and then we started finding, okay, so let's, let's go up to where I, I'm, I go out with my cousin and these two girls, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're, I don't even know if we're together. We're just hanging out. And one of the girls, I'm, we're in there. And she runs into the bar and says, Come out here and fight him. He called me a bitch. He called me a bitch. And I'm just coming back from the American Fest, German affair. We were so, so sloppy drunk. Every single time I leave that festival, something bad happens. I go out there, it's you. And I'm like, come on, we're going to fight. And you're like, Yogi, stop. We're yeah, not fight. I remember I was trying to calm you down. You're like, because we know each other. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. we're not going to fight. And I'm going, yes, we are. You called her a bitch. We're going to fight. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure we just started punching each other. And I, I remember... No, I, I'm going to tell you how... 
Okay, so this is... I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Is, this, I remember this, telling you, yes, we're going to fight. Yeah, I, this is what... Because I was fucked up, but I... I, I know I, that I got... Look, you cut me. I don't know what happened. You slit my arm right here. My, like, $300 chain was gone. Wow. Like, like I never... Like, I swear, like, there was a bunch of stuff like, that happened. Wow. Like, my arm was like... I felt like it was... But I, I know my brother jumped in was helping, I don't see, know. See, see, this is... Kevin this, Briggs was like, I'm going to open the trunk and shoot you guys. I was like, what? So this is... The thing about it is... <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember that part when you came out. You were hype. I'm like, calm down, dude. We know it. I even talked to you in Spanish. I'm like, I got I to gotta appeal to... Oh, to try to get into yeah, my... To, to wake me up. Calm down. No, no, no. I, it, and, and here's the part. You did. You was like, I don't know where. Someone hit me with a bottle. Oh, I, I, my that, brother, the little one. The, the, the I, I never, I never met him before. Yeah, Dito. Yeah, and I don't think he even knew me. No, no, you know, he didn't know me. No, no. So he didn't boom. even know the whole situation. Yeah, it's like, boom, and I, that's I don't remember anything past that. Mm. I don't remember. I, I just remember Sir uh, Bacina, Serge. He mm. came in there. He was pick, picking people together. And I, don't, I don't remember nothing. Then Steve took me home, and but that you, you, you was cool. Like I, I said, calm down, yeah. chill, man. Don't do this, da da da, and and you was like, uh, you know what I mean? Because like you, you just hype. You, 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 you know, I talked to you in Spanish. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, boom, and then that's it. I just I don't remember what happened after that. Yeah. But I didn't. I don't remember, bro. But that, but more people got involved. Yeah. It, it wasn't just me and you. It yeah. Was, but I don't know who. I don't yeah, know yeah. what. You yeah, know what I, mean? I, I remember. I remember Kevin Briggs. Saying, you all better stop. I'm going to go get the something from the trunk. I don't know if he's just trying to, he was trying right. to, maybe like, because he knows both of us. Right, right, right. So he's trying to more calm this whole situation. But I know that that led to uh, some people in my family not liking you. Maybe people in your family, your right. surroundings not liking me. It became, yeah, it became a thing because when you're in a dark place, mm -hmm. you, you, you want to find other things to put your energy on. Yeah. Instead of fixing what the fuck you got going, this the same the this ain't the fight. Mm. Like my my fight, my issue with you was never the issue. Yeah, like my, I have issues. Of course, my issue that night with you wasn't the issue. You know, I have you. I have real issues. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and 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 that person that came out like ah, ah, ah. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I remember she said, "That's why your wife left you." Mm. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> but I have real issues that we. I don't have issues with. I never yeah. had issues with people. You know, so. That's what happens. Now, now I have an issue. Mm -hmm. Now we we're gonna run into each other. Now I have an issue because I don't feel right about mm -hmm. the situation. But it's not the situation. It's just I don't want to face that other situation because that's a bigger monster. Yeah, yeah. This is something that I, it's like uh, uh, like I'm trying to satisfy something because that's gonna. You rather figure this out than all that yeah, shit. Yeah, but that's that really matters. Yeah. But hey, this is right here. This is easy. This. Let, whatever happens happens yeah, yeah. you don't even know what what's going to happen or the outcome but you you think in your yeah. in your stupidity that this is this needs to be addressed yeah and so uh, so how did we how did we figure this out how did do you remember one day sitting with me somewhere and talking about this okay or? so i remember sitting down okay so, i have a memory of yeah, it yeah so okay. i we i think it was the the country bar on the north yep he I was has there with my Oregon. brothers. I was there with my brothers. And I walked in, and I was I like, holy I shit. I seen you, and I, and I really... No, right when I walked in, I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm about to get jumped in this motherfucker. <laughs> so so I, and my, and my brother was like, oh, man. And I said, man, let me go talk to him. And you bought me a shot. I said, nah. And I told you, I said, man, I want my one-on-one. I want -on -one. And you was like, yeah. come on, man, we don't got... And, but, you know, I wasn't drunk either, so, you know, yeah, it kind of, yeah. like, helped that we're not sloppy or fucked up, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, whatever, man. And then... I was kind of salty about that because, you know, that's what I wanted. Again, you want that rather than to face that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then I, I didn't see you for... But the thing is, I wanted to that day to apologize to you because I yeah. felt that I was in the wrong. Even though, like... No, like, you did. You told what, me that. Whatever you, happened, I, I, I know it was a fight. I don't know who hit who, whatever. I, yeah. That day I wanted to get to you. I know that I know you probably, you were angry, like still like, I don't think you said you, but like you came at me more of a, like, more of aggressive. And I was yeah. like, hey man, to tell you the truth, I just want to apologize to you because I felt like I was in the wrong from that. And I want to apologize to you now. Like yeah, yeah, I yeah. felt like that moment was just like, 
Like, it was like I was just so drunk that I really didn't know what you did, you know? You were telling me that you didn't want to fight, and I still was telling you that, yes, I did want to mm -hmm. fight. I wouldn't listen to you. And you were the, the more, like, calm head in yeah, that situation. Yeah, yeah. So that, that happened. Whatever. I'm like, man, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how you do it? Like, ah. yeah. So then I didn't see you for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. I saw you again. I, used to, I was living in Perrysburg, in the mm -hmm. apartments at uh, Perry's Crossings. Okay. By that time, I think that was like 2016, 2017, around that time. Mm -hmm. I saw you there. You were either, either moving someone in or cleaning an apartment. Or, and mm -hmm. you looked at me and said, hey, man, how you doing? I was like, but it, it kind of like, because I'm over it, but I haven't yeah. seen you. We never really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was like, hey, man, I just want to apologize about that, man. That I'm like, you know what? It's cool. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. It's cool. By that time, it's like, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember it. that time. Yeah. I, I think I was working for AAA. Yeah, I saw you. Right you were cleaning, I, I think you were cleaning. You were cleaning an apartment or something. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what yeah. you was doing up there, but you know, then you you did come up to me and you was like, yeah. "Man, my bad about all that." Da da da. You know, I just don't want any issues or problems. I was like, "Yeah, oh, you cool, man." By that time, I'm we're older though too. I'm older. Yeah. I'm, now I'm focusing on what really matters, and my my sons are in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm legit a single dad. Like they they with me half of the time, so I have to be example be that person now yeah. you know what i mean like now now I, I don't face the monster i don't i don't did what i needed to do to get to the level that i need to go yeah. and i think that that's what it's all about this is what i learned about our experiences yeah. is that first of all you know when you're in a dark place you don't you're not focusing on all the right things mm -hmm. you ever notice people when they talk about oh we're going to war huh yeah, but yeah. their house is a mess mm -hmm. like yo go clean your house yeah yeah you know what i mean like or, you know, spend time with your kids. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, they're talking about other dumb shit mm -hmm. that is like, it has nothing. But it's because they, they don't want to face this monster. Mm -hmm. It's too big. It's scary. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to go over here and talk about this or that or whatever. They're talking about things that ain't got nothing to do with mm -hmm. things that could really help them yeah, yeah. personally. Yeah. And like, that's where I, that's, that's the place I was at. Mm -hmm. Like, dealing with you or trying to handle that, it's not going to fix yeah. what I really needed to handle. And I think that what, that's what I learned from that, you know, and being able to sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. I, you know? it, it taught me a lot, man. It taught me like, like, God, like, you need, I, man, I'm not even a big drinker no more because of situations like mm -hmm. that. Like that taught me that drinking, like, um, you need to know your limit. Of course. You need to know exactly <laughs> like where, uh, five beers, you have a good time. Six beers, you get too drunk. You you can't go to six beers. Right. You can't. Right. You got to just buy the five beers. You got if you yeah. buy a six pack, you got to throw that. You got to know that. You got to you got to you got to like um uh, certain uh, certain things like too like when someone's like someone's like that you admire like try to be respectful cuz I've like ever since that I known you like I never like knew you personally but I always admired you, your your the stuff you're doing like with the city. Yeah. Like, you got a job at the like it all came back to circle with you right like like you said that your dad went and got the you know the help for the food stamps and stuff yeah, yeah. you come back to toledo you you end up getting a job with right. the with the lucas county mm -hmm. family yeah, health family service, so yeah. that kind of stuff i always admire that kind of stuff i always admire people that were doing good in the community yeah. so i always looked at you in a positive way and then when i when i woke up the next morning bro it was just like <sighs> what the fuck man I got into a fight with some guy that I really admire, you know, a, a person that I look at for like, for like, for some advice that I would come to you like, hey, I want to, you know, I want to work for the city. And then I would, I would yeah. like, and I just ruined that. You know what I mean? I ruined that because of fight or because I was drunk right, and, right. I, and I, I ruined something that could lead to a friendship because yeah. maybe we weren't friends at the time, but right. I seen the positive things you were doing. And we, I mean, we knew, we knew who we were. I mean, because yeah. like I said, we interacted a couple of times when we played football or whatever, but. Yeah, I think so that that, is that when I woke up that, that next morning, man, I was devastated, bro. I'll tell you the truth. Damn. Yeah. I was sore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I man. just, you know, it's just life, you know. And I, I talked to my sons about that. I think one, one time we were talking about it. I said, you know, you're going to encounter situations like you have to know mm -hmm. how to handle yourself. I tell my son, never drink when you're depressed or upset. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're going to drink, so you're celebrating life. You're happy. If you're ever depressed or upset, come see me. Come mm -hmm. talk to me. Yeah. You know, don't you don't you don't gotta be out there. I'm gonna go get fuck your girl leaves or whatever. Don't do that. Yeah, come, yeah. come come holler at me. We'll talk. We'll hang out. Watch movies. Whatever. Because whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the thing that a, a lot of uh, Latinos don't do either. The, the communication yeah. is never there a lot of times. Mm -hmm. There's like a 
there's like a, 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 a some sort of division between parents and kids a lot of times. Yeah, yeah I work, I provide. You know, you good? Okay. Well, what else do you want? Now you want me to spend time with you? You want you want to talk? You know. Mm. And so yeah. I don't want to be like that. And, you know, I always my doors always open. My my sons are adults. They they got their own place, but they can come whenever they want. You mm-hmm. get, you need to talk. They can never say like, man, I needed you. You weren't there. No, I'm here, man. Yeah, I got yeah. you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, we gotta we gotta step up, man. Cause like a lot of people have different the way they look at the community, the Latino community, and stuff like that. What are some misconceptions about the Latino community here in Toledo? Well, I think that again, the whole growing up in the inner city, being Latino, and how people see you. This is me, right? But mm-hmm. uh, some woman from Perrysburg. Or he must be like a cartel member or something. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been told that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I went to Chevy's, the country bar. Yeah, and I'm yeah, talking yeah. to this girl. It's like, oh, yeah, my uh, my cousin's a cholo, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, what that got to do with me? Yeah. Well, you kind of look like a cholo. Yeah, yeah. See, I think that that's one of the, they're not thinking like this could be a CEO of a company that's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. this is what he likes to dress when he goes out. You know, because... Yeah. They like to paint, you know, society likes to paint a picture. You know, you got tats. Mm -hmm. Somebody, oh, this and that. Maybe, maybe not. You don't know. Not everybody with tattoos is a gangster. Not everybody without tattoos is not a gangster. You don't know that. So I think that that's the misconception that a lot of people have, you know, and there's an issue with that, Mm -hmm. you know. Like I don't have to, I shouldn't have to wear a tie to get respect. Absolutely. You know, and I shouldn't have to, you know, dress like this for people to fear me. Yeah, yeah. Or think, oh, he gangs. I don't fuck with him. He gangs. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm just relax. But it's Friday. Yeah, yeah. But people don't. I think that that's a big misconception. I think that a lot of minority communities mm-hmm. have those, like a little stereotype. Yeah, stereotypes. Like you know, you wear you wear certain clothes or whatever. You mm-hmm. know, I even get it from my own peoples. You know, like mm-hmm. you know, oh, are you, why are you dressed like a gangster? Like what? What, what does that even mean anymore? <laughs> you mean like Al Capone wore a three yeah, piece? Yeah. Like, what, what does that even mean? You know, like, mm-hmm. it's just crazy. How, and those are the misconceptions, you know? Yeah, because you have a cool style. Sometimes you're like, you wear like hip hop. Sometimes right. you wear like a nice dressy button up. So we we got to have different styles for different occasions. That's another like thing, that. you know. Having, you wear suits. I've seen you in so many yeah, suits. You have stuff. to. I remember I had uh, my my uh, my brother's barber. He's mm-hmm. from Nicaragua. He's over here, on, I think, on White Street. On okay. the corner. Anyways, and I... Oh, by Raymer and White. Yeah, 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 Dennis. Yeah, yeah. So, I've known Dennis for so long. It's, it's mm-hmm. crazy. But anyway, so it was my birthday. I said, "Come on, come have a drink with me, man. It's my birthday. Come through." So he come over and I mean, I work. You know, I'm dressed up and shit. He's like, Ala te mira bien. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah, con estilo." You know, you have style. He never. It never dawned on him that just because we're from a certain place. Mm-hmm. We we can't look a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have style. Why not? Yeah, of course. You know, when you come from poverty, sometimes that that's engraved in you. Like, yeah, I can't I can't dress this way. Or I, I don't. What? Yeah, where's my? Oh, you know, or or you can do that. Yeah, yeah. you can. Why not? You know, mm-hmm. well, this is who we are as a people. You look at our. You look at the way people dressed in the sixties or fifties. That was looking nice. Mm-hmm. Mexico, Cuba, just the white, black and white um, videos that I yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dressed up. That was looking nice. nice, man. Back in like back in the day, like even like here, like the old weight games, like back in the day, like everybody in the stands would dress up nice. Yeah, Ooh, it's tired. an event, you know. And it was it's like crazy. I love that, and that's why I was telling Vadi. I said, you know what we need here in Toledo. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to the Pocos Locos, the guy. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Caro. Caro. Yeah. yeah. I was telling. I was like, we need. Uh, a place where adult, you know, you can bring your wife, your mm. girlfriend dress up like a jazz, Latin jazz night, yeah. cigars, whatever, you know. Yeah, but yeah. people got to look nice. Yeah, that would be sweet to do Latino like that. stuff like that. You know, you got the salsa, whatever, but the old school shit, you know, yeah. that vibe. I think Almost that like back in the day. like Back type. in the day, it's an event. You dress up. Hey, we, we, you know what I mean? Like You should do that. You should, you should come up with an event. I'll help you promote it. I think that, and, <laughs> and I told Vadi about it, and I, none of that wrong pattern, none of that reggaeton shit, but she's just like, you know, yeah, like, you know, Havana yeah. Nights, man, yeah, like just the cool sweet, boleros, bro. just. Maybe have a comedian come up. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that people need that. Mm-hmm. You know, not everybody wants to go kick it and get fucked up all the time. Some people just want to. It's almost take- like a cabana night or something. That's what I would want to see here. Yeah. I think we have enough people to make it happen. Yeah, we could, bro. So. You know, you can get a, a live band, you know, with the congas. You yeah. know what I mean? Just 
chill mode, you know, like you, it, it takes you like you're on the beach again, man. It's like, mm-hmm. you know what? That's the vibe that I, that I would like to be part yeah, of. Yeah, that's, I mean? that's awesome. Hey, so, okay, let me know, like, your background, all the, your, the way you came, how did that influence your personal life? How did that influence your personal life for your, you know, for the stuff you do, how you help the community and stuff like that? Um, I've always, I'm a people person. I mm-hmm. like to talk to people. I like, I've always liked to talk to people. Okay. So when I went to school... I, I was talking to my advisor. I said, she, my advisor said, what do you like to do? I said, I, like to, I love talking to people. Mm-hmm. Before I, I started going to UT, I was working at Adelante with the kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like talking to the kids. I like talking to their parents, trying to guide them in the right direction, you know. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> they're also like, kind of like, kind of like, there's a lot of people like your situation where it's like, you know, dad ain't home and now I'm working or whatever. And, well, that's not enough. And then other situations come up with, well, shit, I'm going to go ahead and do this because that's more money than what they're paying me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so a lot of those kids are forced to go the route that you were forced to go mm-hmm. because there is no one to tell them, no, listen, OK, you can do this. You can do this and do that. You don't have to do the other thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't have that person. So I, I wanted to be that voice for those kids. Mm-hmm. A lot of these kids were like on probation and stuff, at, at risk, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're in the system. So I, I was doing that for Adelante. So that, I want to work, you know, I want to work with people. I want to help people. Mm-hmm. Kind of like what that teacher did for you at Wayne. Yeah, right? yeah. What's his name? Mr. Al- Mr. Luna. Mr. Luna. Yeah. Mr. Alvarado was the other guy. He was at, okay, yeah. Yeah, he was at Way too. Yeah. Um, so he was like, well, you can, you can run your non you can run a nonprofit and help people out. Mm-hmm. Like Adelante, you can actually. Have your own adelante. Mm. I was like, well, how do I do that? Well, this you have to go to school for this, this, and that. You get a, a degree in political science, mm-hmm. and then you get a minor in public administration. Mm-hmm. And that, you're learning about government stuff and how the funding and all that with political mm-hmm. science. And with public administration, you learn how to run the, um, mm-hmm. the business. Okay. So that's what I study. And so I become... President of the Latino Student Union, mm-hmm. we threw the uh, the scholarship dance. Uh, we invited the director of Lucas County Jobs and Family Services because we heard that the assistant director was a Mexican lady. Mm-hmm. So hey, let's get in here because we're trying to sell we're trying to sell tables. Mm-hmm. At that time, it was like seven hundred dollars a table, but these agency they have the money they'll pay and shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we sent the letter out, and the assistant director wrote me back and she said, oh, I'm interested. How much are the tables? I'm going to mm-hmm. So she comes in. That night, when I was the president, I gave a speech about Latino unity, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. And when the dance was over, she came like, when do you graduate? I said, next year. She said, I need you to come see me as soon mm-hmm. as you graduate. That's awesome. I said, what? So, so I went to go see her the next, the year after that. Mm-hmm. Man, they got me a job there. Yeah. Um, and it went from I want to open up my own nonprofit to now I'm working at the welfare office. I was working the front desk, mm-hmm. and you know how many people I dealt with, like a lot of Latino people. Man, I dealt with a lot. You've helped of people. more with people than you could have ever. Man, helped. it was so crazy, <laughs> man. I'm, it was crazy because I might have even helped your mom. Or well, yeah, you know, I, I remember just I helped a lot of like even Cuban, me. Cuban females yeah. and older ladies that came in there. I helped a whole bunch. Yeah. But but you know, <laughs> I I love doing that because. Yeah. I know when it's genuine. I know when the help is really mm. needed. You know what I'm saying? And I was, uh, they were paying me more because I spoke Spanish. Yeah. So every time somebody came in, they don't speak English, right? Like, hey, Francisco, you got to go talk. Yeah. And I go, I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you're bilingual. Yeah. So then that's how I ended up. I think everything, like you said, comes full circle. Mm-hmm. It's like someone looked out for me. Yeah. And now, I look out for people. Them same people that helped that helped you, like you know what I mean. Yeah. And then I, I one time I tore my ACL playing flag football, and for like three months I went down there. I, they gave me money. They gave me a, a food stamp. So <laughs> I went in there. I think you might have been in one of those offices. <laughs> and I was funny. doing yeah, one yeah. of because I was on a thing like this. And I couldn't work, and I worked for a factory. So I was like, shit, they gave me like 230 food stamps for three months. I need that. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Like, it was it was back in the day when I was like, I needed it at yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, wasn't, yeah, yeah. I wasn't doing anything crazy. But uh, so, yeah, man, I think that that's what led me to this. And now here I am. I'm, mm-hmm. I've been there for 17 years. Damn. And I don't know. I, I feel great. I'm happy. And 
<clears throat> I was able to have a conversation with my ex-wife and say, you know what? I just want you to be happy because I mm-hmm. want my kids to see their mom happy. Of course. And I want, because I'm, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. They see me happy. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do and mm-hmm. I'm okay with life. And But it, man, it's, it was a journey, man. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's just hard. You I know? was going to ask you, this is not even something that I planned, but like, but aren't you ready to settle down already? Like you've been single. Man, for, I, I, you, it, have you been dating and stuff like that? Okay, so the dating, the dating scene is crazy at forty six, man. Okay, because, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Because I'm on my third marriage. It seems like you gave up on that. No, like, no, I, I still believe in it, though. Okay, I, I, I would like to get married. I think that. Okay, I think that I never gave up on love. I believe in love. Yeah, yeah. But I think that now that I'm older. It's more of a, I want to I, I wanna take my time mm-hmm. and get to know someone. Okay. You don't want to jump into anything. No. And it, it, sometimes people don't have that, mm-hmm. that, that luxury of a, take my time. What are you talking about? Let's, yeah, yeah. Don't you feel it already? Like yeah, we've been yeah. talking for three weeks. Mm-hmm. What else do you want? And it's like, it's not to me. It's like, I'm about to commit. I'm not afraid of commitment, mm-hmm. but I just can't commit if I feel like something's a little off. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, yeah, because you gotta understand someone you're gonna be with for the rest of your life. That's it's a, it's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Like it's back back then, it was more like, well, I'm not alone. I got somebody. Cool. Mm-hmm. But now you're dealing with this person that you probably it's not compatible with you, but you're not alone. Yeah. We're like, uh, I don't want that. See, I don't want to do. Well, I'm not alone, and then I'm yeah. with someone that's not even compatible with me. On. You're not be you're not gonna be compatible a hundred percent. Of course. But there are things that really matter to me. Yeah, yeah. And there are things that really matter to that person. Of course. And whatever those things are, I wanna be able I wanna make sure that I meet that. Mm-hmm. And whatever those are for me, I want to make sure that they meet those of standards course. or whatever. Yeah, because there's a give and take. We're not on about both to sides. be fighting, you know, like, no, well, we knew this already. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like one of the main things is m- my friends, my family, my mm-hmm. closest people. Like, I don't ever want to censor them in front of a person that I'm dating because, hey, she's here. You got to chill out. Yeah, yeah. Her. I don't like No, I, I, want, I want you to be yourselves because this is, this is, the, this is what you're going to be part of. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wouldn't want her to censor her people. Of course. Like, you got someone is whatever they are or whatever they do. That's cool. It ain't got yeah, nothing to do yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want anyone. To, Why is he talking like that? Why don't yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't. Mm-hmm, the minute you start doing like, yeah, eh, yeah, you gotta go. So crazy. Because yeah. no, I don't like that. I don't. I don't do judgmental people. Mm. I don't. I can't do it. And, and and there there comes a time where people are very judgmental. You mm-hmm. know, females can be very judgmental. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I don't because I don't like it. I don't do that. And then so, and, and then not only that, but like you've lived a single life for so long. That's another so you, thing. That's like if you bring in someone in, you have to bring someone in and know that your life is going to change. It's going to, you're going to, you got to stop focusing so much about yourself. And like, there's things where you got to focus about yourself, but then focus a lot of time on that person. And, and then there's also the transitional period, right? From being uh, single to uh, exploring, mm-hmm. entertaining the thought, the idea. And that transitional time, it could get very blurry. Like, are, are they feeling the transitional time? Mm-hmm. Is it taking too slow? Is it not yeah, going yeah. too fast? Or, yeah, that's right. You know, so now you, you know, that may not work for them either. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're like, I'm not used to, like, if I, if I start talking to a female, like, every day, like, hey, yeah. you know, I'm, because I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So if I don't do that and she's the type, like, you know, she's into me and she just wants to talk, like, like, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean. That kind of like gives me like anxiety, man. Like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> like, I'm gonna hit you up later. Come yeah. down, like, oh, you, you don't want to talk right now. Oh, yeah. See, and then that, like, oh, fuck. you're like, oh man, I gotta be careful. You know, and that that transitional period where I don't be on. I'm not like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what's going on? Hey, how was your day? What? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, not tomorrow again. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you... oh my god. Then the next, like, hey, like, all oh. right, let me. Uh, let me give you a little bit. Uh, I don't. I, you could take it or not. In my little. Go advice. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Me, I've been in some a lot of relationships. Right. I'm the type of person that I most most of the time I jump in and I show. I sh- I just go with just straight love and like I just give it all, man. I I, I don't let the old relationship or the old. Right. You know what I mean. I yeah, just yeah, yeah. I forget about everything that happened in this relationship. Right. Right. And I give this girl. 
Like, a, you know, I'm yeah, sure yeah, you do the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I give this girl the 100% opportunity. If I really like her, man, I'll, I, I'm the first one that says I love you. I'm the first one that does this. Yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah, first, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the one that, that, that calls more. I'm the one that they have to say, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, chill out. I turn into that because but I, that, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a person that always, I always <laughs> wanted that family. And in my first marriage, it was with my kids, mm. my kids' mom, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. messed that up because I was young. Yeah, I was yeah. like, you yeah, going yeah. out, yeah. taking care of other things besides right, her. Right. And, I, and then my second marriage, I went to prison. I, I messed that all up. This is my third marriage. I want to make it work. Right. So when I met her, I met her at the gym working out. She was fixing her life. I was on my road to fixing my life. And I said, man, I'm going to jump right in. And within, I think, a year, I proposed. Within two years, we're married. And um, we talked about all this. Like, she's 42, I'm 42. She's yeah. been in some bunch of shit. I've been in a bunch of shit. So we went into, like, deep conversations of, of what we wanted to do with our lives, how we wanted to take care of, like, social media, how, like, I wanted right. to do this. She wanted to do social media. So we talked about that. We're not going to be in no jealousy. We're not right, going right. to. We just sat down and actually ironed out, like, what adults should within the parameters right. that we know yet. Right. Of course, more things are going to come up. But I think that was like a healthy way to start for now, you know. I and then I, I just it. I just went all in. <laughs> and I think that the communication part worked worked for mm. you because both of you guys are communicating. But see, that's yeah. the part. Like for the most part, I'm a very outgoing outgoing person. I'm a, I'm not an introvert, but I mm. I seem to attract a lot of people that are very low energy. Okay. Uh, a lot of times they say opposites attract. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm out there like, yeah, yeah. and then you attract, hey, what's going on over here? I'm going to go talk to you. So mm -hmm. now I'm attracting people that are very low energy, mm -hmm. introverts. They don't really, you know, and then they, it's cool at first, but then, but I'm still me. Yeah. So it, it becomes an issue to them because that's not them. That Now they're, oh my God, what do I do? Mm -hmm. So then, then you want to go out, go do more things, talk. And right. And so... I think that that what what happened with you it's it's super cool mm. because you're both on that same yeah. you have these conversations. Man, I find myself having these conversations with people, and some of them think I'm crazy because the way I'm expressing myself, or this is what you know. Mm -hmm. I let it be known this is what I want. What what do you want? Mm -hmm. And some people don't know what they want. Yeah, some I've people asked don't. people, that, "Hey, what do you want? What do you mean?" They don't know. It's like the, it's the question, what do you want? You know, some people want a cheeseburger. Some people mm -hmm. want to be happy. Some people, what do you want? And then you know? another thing about, like, you, like, uh, I know that you are a very, you're a motivating person. You can, like, it's, like you got to think, don't have your, I don't know. I don't know you like that, but just don't have your standards where it has to be the most beautiful or whatever. Because you, you can create that girl, man. Of course. You can, like, you can, like, even, like, you can get the girl that's always looking at you. But you don't ever look at her, you know what I mean? Like, there's always a girl that's after you, uh, after you, yeah, but maybe you're after this other girl, and that, <laughs> that girl's not, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know your situation, <laughs> but sometimes that girl that's always looking at you is the girl that really, really, that you should focus on, and if you can motivate her to become the best version of herself, yeah. man, it was like, it would it, it, it just creates this, this almost even like stronger bond between yeah. you two, and that's kind of me and my wife. Like, I was like three... I was like three hundred, like two seventy five when I first got with her. I was like going to the gym, but I was like bigger. No, I was maybe like three two fifty, two fifty, and I got bigger. And she was working out, mm. but I think once we got together and we just helped each other, motivate each other to become who, yeah. we, like who we are right now. You know, That's we're dope. trying to do something positive, and I think you could do the same thing yeah. because the way you are, you motivate men. You motivate. I'm sure there's women that they watch your stuff and that and. <clears throat> That's just, the, that's just like the stuff you write, bro. The stuff you write, your little stuff, like maybe like it's not like we're not, we don't have millions of right, followers of or nothing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. just us, these people here in yeah, Toledo, yeah, 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 you yeah, motivate yeah. us, bro. I, I, uh, I thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, I, I do that whole talking, motivate, mm -hmm. motivating people and everything. That, that also attracts certain people. Like you said, there's mm -hmm. always a, a person watching or looking or whatever, mm -hmm. and they come and meet you or whatever, and then yeah. they, uh, then things don't go the way that they think they should. Oh, I thought you was this person. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. it's like, no, it's just you didn't get your way because mm. your way, it's not my way. Yeah, yeah. All of yeah. a sudden, I'm not that person because they're not. I feel like that my my personality attracts that. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to the females, you know, mm -hmm. like 
I thought you was this way. Isn't that what? You, well, just because I'm over here saying, you know, things that could inspire people, like do good, do right, mm -hmm. da da da, this and that, it doesn't mean you you can pull a fast one on me. Of course, because that's another thing. You know, mm -hmm. you, you gotta watch out. Some people are just in it for something else. The the grass is, sometimes is <laughs> very tall and the snakes are down there. You know, and you don't know. Yeah. You know, so of you gotta course. be like, okay, you, I, I'm able to identify these things, like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it it's crazy, dude, because the more the more you think and and you experience life, that third eye, it gets bigger and it mm. sees things more clearer than yeah. than just for mm. for what they that third they eye. think they think they are, you know? Yeah. But it's there. You I, I I know how to read people, bro. And they're like, I know when they come with ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. And I know when they're being genuine. And sometimes they can be genuine, but it doesn't fit what I want either. So yeah. it's, but that, but I still believe in love. Just yeah. everything to say that, and I'm not chasing after a particular person, mm -hmm. but if, if something was ever to happen and the universe and the stars are aligned, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be like, oh, no, 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 man, no come on, let's do this. Yeah, let's, let's get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that conversation you have with her, that's awesome. Yeah. I think people need to have those conversations. Yeah, so social media can tear your fa your family apart if you don't do it the right way. You know? Social media, somebody said, I can't get on social media because my because uh, it's just fucking up my relationship. Mm -hmm. Why? What are you doing on social media that is fucking up your relationship? Because mm -hmm. it can't be, what What am I doing on social media? I'm, I'm writing things, I'm sharing memes, I'm mm -hmm. cracking jokes. How is that, you know, it's because... The social media got nothing to do with it. Yeah, you take social media more in a positive route, you know what right? I mean, social media got nothing to do with it. it, mm -hmm. it who, I remember being told <laughs> I was in a relationship mm -hmm. in 2011, from 2011 to 2000, I want to say 14, 15. Around oh, now. yeah? Like, serious. Like, I was about to get married and everything. But I remember, you got to delete this, you got to delete this girl, you got to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was becoming that, oh, shit, I got to get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it's, it's, just, I don't like it's that exhausting, either. dude. I was in a marriage like that. It's ex it's exhausting. Like, mm -hmm. like I can't. You go out to have a drink, and it's like, oh, you know her. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's not healthy, it, bro. That was exhausting. That's an unhealthy relationship. It, it, it was, it, you know, and it's. I have a past. Everybody mm -hmm. has a past. Of course, ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing now. Yeah, you know. So it became to the point where, like, oh, you know her? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, how do you know her? What do you want to know if we fucked or not? <laughs> Just let me. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and then now, now it gets to the point where, like, if somebody asks me that, like, do you know her? Mm. Yeah, you know. Of course, yeah, yeah. And, and I and how you know her? Introduce her to what you I, mean? You I'm know? the type of person I like to introduce to everybody. I, 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 I do that care. too because I don't ever want people to misunderstand so like, yeah. things like. Like I like my coworkers. I work with a lot of females. Mm -hmm. Like they, you know, whoever they with, I, I buy them a drink. Like hey, how you doing? I'm like, you know, because I don't, you know, you never know how people think. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I don't, I don't want problems, man. Yeah, me neither. I yeah, know. I introduce everybody to my wife to everybody. Okay, so Francisco, on my podcast, I always ask people certain uh, questions, you yeah, know, at the yeah. end. And I always ask people, what is your like your passion and your goals for like your future? Um, like <clears throat> anything like business wise or do you want to like start like something like yeah, that? Yeah, uh, right now I don't what my I don't have any business goals, you mm -hmm. know. I I'm just pretty content with life and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I've never been very ambitious. Okay. Um but my passion is it's to help people. I like helping people outside of work. Mm -hmm. That's work. Work is work. But I like to I've become good at making sure that who I'm helping it's worth the help. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, you can't just help anybody. No, You know, you got to like, try to, try to like really look at people. Like, is this something I really want to invest my time in? Is this mm -hmm. someone that, that, that really uh, will do something if I help? Or is this, am I wasting my time in this person? Mm -hmm. You know, men mentoring a person or showing them the ropes or showing them the way or telling them, Hey, go, th go here. They'll help you there. You need this, go over there. You know, mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, they don't want to do the legwork. Mm -hmm. They want you to, hey, can you call them? Can you? Mm -hmm. No, you got to do the legwork. So I always look at that, mm -hmm. you know. So that's my passion. I love helping mm -hmm. people. I love showing them the way. Mm -hmm. As far as like uh, business-wise, mm -hmm. I'm okay. Life yeah, is but good. like, okay, how about your passion? You could always grow that. Go speak like a bigger, like you could be a speaker. Like even your social media, like yeah. those are like 
yeah. uh, like a lot of your stuff you say or you write or you know your little your little tips and all that yeah. that kind of stuff like uh i i find that all interesting yeah. um you speak at schools and stuff yeah. like that every once I, in a while yeah, or stuff it, yeah. like that yeah that kind of stuff man it, like your whole immigrant story that you have is an amazing story like that whole like from from not even knowing English, right. to coming here, to going to Miami, to, to coming to Toledo, of, of all places, and then learning English, being the, 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 the student uh, you know, president <coughs> of the Latin community mm -hmm. or whatever. And then, like, like all that, it's a beautiful story. You, you, you could speak about a lot of stuff. Yeah. You have a lot of different experiences. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have the hood experience. You didn't go to prison. You didn't, yeah, yeah. But you have your own experience. Right, you have right, mental right. health. You have, like, all that stuff that happened with your, with your wife. Yeah, yeah. That was, you was down and out. Yeah. Like, it led to a lot of messed up yeah, things. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of experiences. You have a voice, man. People, grown men like me, listen to you. Because I, I can tell you right now, I've been influenced by a lot of stuff that you, uh, you, that you put out there. So those goals, uh, you, you, you might not have them, but I have goals for you. I just see I see the good, yeah, man. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. sometimes a, another grown man could tell you yeah, yeah, or yeah, can, yeah. Can, can open your eyes because you help me so i would like to help you Thank um you, yeah. i'm on this fit, health and fitness journey so i like to ask a lot, a lot. i know that you do health yeah, and yeah, fitness yeah, yeah, yeah. uh what's what's up with your health and fitness Man, you still doing it Is i'm it? still doing that i'm gonna tell you how it started okay yeah so tell you, me. you told me that you was overweight and everything mm -hmm. tell me about I, that um i had i had went to nicaragua in 2017 mm -hmm. and someone told me in someone told me uh in nicaragua said hey make sure you make sure you wear uh uh, a, a coat or a sweater because it's winter. Mm -hmm. Man, it's 85 degrees. That's their winter, it's 80, but it's raining all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's raining, it's crazy. Uh, so I come back from Nicaragua and I get super sick, bro. Like, if it wasn't a coronavirus, I don't know what it was, but I was dying, mm -hmm. man. Like, so I, I went to the doctor. They, uh, they said I had some sort of flu or whatever, mm -hmm. but because I was in Nicaragua and I never wore not, you know, anything or whatever. So they gave me some uh, antibiotics and all that, and they didn't do nothing, man. I was, like, for real, I thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. And I went after that. Uh, I, it took me two weeks. I've never been sick for two weeks. That was crazy. But, like, sick. Like, uh, Damn, so it was like a virus. Like, it was bad, man. Like, seriously, I was scared. Maybe like in the water or something. Something, man. Something. It was crazy. Like, I had the shakes, body was aching, bones, all that. I, it was bad. So... So okay. I, I ran into this older gentleman that mm -hmm. knew my father. Mm -hmm. and now he was like in his 80s, you know. He knew my father was when he was in his 60s or late 50s when my mm -hmm. father passed away. And he's from Nicaragua himself too. So he comes to the welfare office, you know, I'm interpreting this. Like, hey, there's an older gentleman in there. He don't speak English, da-da-da. I go over down there. And I'm like, oh, Don Armando, da-da-da, you know. And he tells me that um, he needs help going grocery shopping you know he don't mm -hmm. got nobody you know so i'm like you know what i'll help you i I'll, I'll take you you know i just remember him and my dad were really good friends or mm -hmm. whatever so i start spending time with this older gentleman and i take him to to the store and i'm driving him around and when we're driving he, he keeps looking at me you know and and then <laughs> we go to walmart and then then he looked at me again like like you know like you feel like am i being charged what the hell's going on mm -hmm. And then he was like, you know what? I just got to say it. You know, old people don't got no filter, man. Yeah, yeah. So I pulled up at his driveway or whatever. He's like, I just got to tell you. I said, well, he said, you look ugly. That's what he said. He said, you look ugly. That's fail. Like, okay. I just drove this motherfucker around yeah, yeah, town yeah. and there you going to call me ugly? Yeah, like, yeah. you look ugly. You're, you're better than that. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of yourself, you're going to die. I was 265 pounds. I'm not. You're taller than me. You mm -hmm. can still play it off. Yeah, me, yeah. I'm. I'm your average size, if not short. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you, "You're gonna die." Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. he was trying to hit you hard, like man. Dude, that, that shit came at me. I, I I went home. I looked at myself in the mirror, and I did, bro. I did. Mm -hmm. And that first thing I did is I went and got me a ninja blender, mm -hmm. and I juiced for a whole month. I didn't eat nothing but just I was just juicing in the morning, uh, the uh, middle of the day, mm -hmm. and at night. And I just shitted like 30 pounds. 
But then I looked like a crackhead. Yeah, because like I had a. <laughs> yeah, you lose everything. Yeah, man, it was crazy. That's then I looked crazy. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh. And people mm-hmm. at work were like, are you all right? Are you sick? Yeah, because. Everybody I, thinks you have cancer or something. Because I wasn't. I was just, just sitting every day, just shit like crazy. Yeah, just juicing. Yeah, juicing, <laughs> man. And I'm like, I don't know how to work out. I've never worked out a day in my life. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So I go to um, LA Fitness in Miami. Okay. And I joined there, and the guy was like, the dude was like getting ready to quit. So he gave me a fucking cheap ass membership. It was like $25 a month. And that's LA Fitness. Yeah, and that's expensive. Yeah, too. man. He was like, you know what? Because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, dude. He's like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Like, I'm like, all right. And then he was like, he showed me the uh, circuit. He was like, you're going to do three, do three sets of this and this, da, 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 da. I'm running it down and shit. And then he was like, and then make sure you run a mile every day. Okay. I was like, all right. So then I started working out. Well, I was running, but, but I didn't work out yet. I just was running and shit, you know? Yeah. I was losing more weight. I think I got to like 210. But uh, I still didn't like the way I don't. I didn't like that, you know. So then, uh, then I started working out. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then I'm getting bulky, but not, it's like it's like uh, you're testing things. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, then I had to cut meat. I stopped, stopped eating red meat. I I don't even. I stopped eating pork. Like I eat oh, chicken or okay or shrimp. Like or a whatever. leaner leaner meat. And it's been a journey, you mm-hmm. know. And I have fluctuated because your body doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. You're, you you don't you don't know what you're doing either. Yeah, yeah. You have to learn. So so that was 2017, like my first time. I think that I went to the gym. It might have been like maybe like 2018 because mm. he told me that like like towards the end of 2017. Yeah, and you never went to the gym before that, like never. growing up. That's like not a that's not a that's not a um, a discipline that I grew up with. Mm-hmm. So so you, know? you just had to create that. Is yeah. that something that you're teaching, like to the young, to the people, like your younger generation, well, like, my, like, like even like like my sons, you know, like mm-hmm. um, my son, he's like my oldest, he's like six one, he's mm-hmm. a big Damn. dude, and he he was getting big, he was like two hundred and sixty pounds, like, mm-hmm. you. and then I'm like, oh, you getting big? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh. he's like, I want to learn how to box. I said, yeah, you know, my little brother used to box, and he was mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with you, Jose. He's gonna teach me how to box. Da da da. All right, cool. I said, go, okay, cool. And they started doing, they started go running and shit. So now he, he go to the gym all the time. Mm-hmm. He looks good. My other son, he goes every now and then, you know, it's, he struggles with it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But again, this is not something we grew up with. Of this course, is not a discipline yeah, yeah. that, that just discovered this like three years ago, yeah. three, four years ago, literally. So it's yeah. not something that, so we're all, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's, I think it's good for you, man. Fuck, it's yeah. good for you because then COVID hit. Mm. Now think about if COVID hit and I'm 265 pounds, 270 pounds, mm. I'm dead. Yeah. So you that man it. said what he needed to say. Cause you did get, you got COVID and all that when no, it, I didn't get COVID. Me neither. I didn't get COVID. I never got COVID. But dude. during COVID, man, and I was out doing everything. During COVID, yeah, I was I was playing um YouTube videos, workout. Videos. I was at home doing all types of crazy shit, man. Damn. I was staying every day. Oh yeah, you were. I remember. I was like, that was like my best shape, bro. I remember. Cause it's so boring. He was doing, uh, he was doing uh, everything, bro. Dips I, like, and I can't. I still can't. I can only do like one or two. And I'm working out for a whole year. It's it's it's, it's hard. hard I remember bro. that. I remember not being able to do one sometimes. Like, hey, yeah, I can do two. I think now, but I you couldn't know, do one like at all. <laughs> the, uh, now my issues like my back every now and then. You yeah, know, I hurt yeah. my back. Like fuck. So. I'm trying to. I remember you said something about lifting and you know doing things like that. So did so so I was having a, a a small back problem. I got I got some health issues and stuff that. But other than that, I had like some small like hurting my yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like where I couldn't even go to work for like two days. I was like stiff, right? <laughs> so I bought this like um, this thing on Amazon. It's like a where you lay on it. It bends like this. For real? Like you lay. It's like a flat at the bottom, yeah. and it has, and then you can bend it. It's like just a piece of plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you lay on it, and it stretches your back. Oh. And it opens it like dope. that. So you should try that. It's only okay. like twenty five bucks. Okay. And that kind of and then doing uh you know back workouts the kind of where you where you where you lay. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Like we yeah, have I've that bar right here, yeah, and you just yeah, do this. Yeah. That's for to you want to get those muscles down here strong. I gotta do that. I'm gonna do that because I don't what? Do that. So so what happens if if those muscles aren't strong around your spine? You're putting all your pressure on your spine. You do any kind of like movement, any kind of like bad thing yeah. with your with your back. Yeah. You gotta have your back muscles strong. Yeah, yeah. And, and the same thing like when my mom says she has like uh, 
elbow pain, I say, mom, because you have to build your muscle. Because mm. this muscle has to be strong and this muscle has to be strong. Because if we let all this deteriorate, deteriorate, Damn. nothing is... You, that's when all older people got all this arthritis, Damn. all these hurt. Because look at like you all you have all this muscle. Yeah. Every day that we're not building muscle, we're losing muscle. Right. So the older you get, you can see how dogs, <coughs> older dogs, they're all they, they can't even go up the steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, don't yeah. work them out. Right, right, right. Their muscle deteriorates. Yeah. And we gotta remember that for the future. We gotta You're make right. sure our kids know that. You're right. Our daughters, our wives, everybody. You're right. We don't need to be Superman. We uh, there's no competition That's, between me and you. Who's the strongest or nothing? Just go to the gym every day and it. do whatever you can that's for that it. day. That's it. Even if it's just walking around, just do Get something. Get up and move. That's it. I'm believing now at getting just one little tiny bit better today, tomorrow, right. Right. every day, just right. a little bit better. I, I, I swim in the morning. I couldn't even swim good. I was swimming, you know, but I, I was like my legs. And now <laughs> every day I swim, I, I do like two laps yeah, yeah. and I'm getting better. And I put in my mind that I'm saving somebody. So I'll go, I jump in the pool and I say, I'm going to save this little kid. And I practice on how to swim. And now I'm becoming a better swimmer. That's dope. Just by living, yeah. doing little things like and that. And you're challenging yourself. Every day yeah. you're, you're challenging yourself. But, but, but I struggle, dude. Like some days I can't, I want to get up and I, and I have to like Damn. find a way to get up, try to get away. Like, can you give me like a little advice for days where I'm struggling, days where I'm like... Like, are you saying mentally? Like mentally, or, or bro. Or like, your body is hurting physically or no, what? No, not mentally? physically. Okay. Mentally. Because like, I still, I st I'm still that fat boy, man. I'm still that candy. I'm still cake. I'm still like, yeah, I, I yeah. still struggle, man. Like, what's of some advice you give to I think, people I think that... The, the, I think good sleep. Like, you know, you got to sleep good. You got to mm -hmm. get eight hours, man. That's, yeah. They say that when you diet and sleeping... It's essential. Like okay. that, that helps you lose weight, mm -hmm. you know, and that helps you, your body can recuperate, get up in the morning. Because mm -hmm. if you, let's just say you go to bed at 10, right? And then you wake up at four. Mm -hmm. you, you're not sleeping. You're not, you got to get you at least eight to nine hours of sleep. And yeah. I'm talking about like good sleep. Not like you lay down at nine and you close your eyes, pass out at 11. That's not. Yeah. Because there's different stages of yeah, sleep, right? You got to get that good sleep. But it's then like your body's rest. rested and your mind is rested. Then you get up like, I'm going to go do something. I, mm. I already rested. But if you don't rest good, mm. your, your mind is like, damn, I got to go to the gym shit. Yeah. Because it didn't rest. It didn't get that, that I, time. You know a lot of saying? times I think that's what it is, too, because I wake up, say I go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night, like you said, and I wake up at 4, and I'm like, man, I'm so tired still. Then like, I think, like, also the dieting, like, for instance, like me, like, honestly, bro, like, I'll eat a salad in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. and then I'll eat something I'll, at night. I'll eat, like, light shit, like, and I don't eat. In between, like some people be snacking or whatever, mm. that's cool, whatever, but I don't do that. And yeah. the only time I eat crazy, if there was a time when I eat crazy, the weekends, like Saturday or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I'll go, go to the China buffet. And even then, I'll get some uh, the, uh, the rolls, the, the, mm. the sushi rolls or whatever, and some bro broccoli or whatever. But okay. I think the dieting is important. Like yeah. that, I don't eat that pork or the I red believe meat. In I believe too, do. because I've been working out for one year, and there's people that work out the gym with me, and they, they've been there every day for the whole year, and I don't see nothing's changed. <laughs> Nothing. And they're doing machines. They're doing everything. They're doing cardio. They're doing exactly. And I see them every day. It's not like it's fake. You know what I mean? They've been coming 365 days. They're doing days. it. They're there. Damn. But I have not seen anything. So I don't know when they go home, they're not doing their diet so part. The diet and the sleeping, essential, for real. Like, look it up. They, they got to sleep. You have to sleep. Yes. Yeah, really you know important. what? That's like my main thing, man. Like, I don't care. If I have a hot day, they better be over by like eight mm -hmm. and on, the, on the weeks, you know, during the week yeah. because I'm not about to be out here till two, three in the morning and then I got to get up to go to work. Like, that's just fucking my sleeping time. Yeah. I, and I'm like so serious on that. People think I'm crazy. I'm like, dude, I got to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I can't eat because now I'm going to get up grouchy hat you know i didn't rest well yeah. now after i get off work i gotta go to the gym now, i don't really I'm, I'm at the gym yawning and she's like oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i've done that and yeah, i was like yeah. i don't like that you gotta it's make horrible. it you gotta try to make it easier on you instead of harder on you too mm -hmm. i believe the gym if if you go in there try to be superman from the beginning oh, hell no. then you'll never you'll you'll make it so hard that you'll want to run out of there i was going i was when i was living in Parisburg when i told you i seen you mm -hmm. i was walking two miles a day walking you know mm -hmm. and then i go to the doctor and i said man i can't even lose weight man because i was big and he's like well walk faster because mm -hmm. you know you 
And those, and you're in that moment where you're not doing, you think yeah, you're yeah. doing something, you're not doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those people you say they go to the gym and you're like, yeah, they, mm-hmm. they're not doing nothing. I mean, they're, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beginning though. Mm-hmm. You, you can't take away the, all the credit. It's, yeah. it's something, but you're doing the bare minimum yeah, of what yeah. you could possibly be doing. And I get stuck like that too. Like that's you know? good advice for me. You dude. know what I mean? Like you're just doing the bare, well, I did this and it's like, like, like how you say, you know, you push yourself. Like, that's, today, I'm going to try to do this. You know that now that I've been working out for a while, the weights are getting light. Like a 40-pound girl. Right, right. Like, it's getting where I'm doing 15 of I used to not even be able to do five, you know? Now I'm like, I need to go to 45. But I'm like still like, nah, why? Right. But really, I should. Because why am I doing 15 <laughs> of these, you know? Right, right, right. But I'm... St- I, I, you just I, gotta push I, yourself, I block you know? myself, and instead of just moving to the 45s right. or the 50s, I kind of like, I need to like. So I go. was doing like the running. I, 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 man, I was at Wildwood Park in two, 2017, mm-hmm. walking before this old man called me ugly. Mm-hmm. I was just walking, and this older dude was running. He, he must have been like 46 or something, like my age now. Mm-hmm. He was running, and I'm back then, 2017. I, I must have been like what, maybe like 30 something, late 30s, and he was like. <laughs> You can go run, run. He's like, run. You yeah. can do it. And I'm like, I don't know. Man, he, <laughs> he ran, dude. That dude ran like three miles. Yeah. I'm like, you can do it. And they're yeah, like, yeah. dude, now I'll be running. I run my, I run, I'm all over these. So I'll run yeah. anywhere. You know, I'm like, but I remember that. But you're thinking, oh, I got out to that. I did something. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, because doing the, doing the tough things, like doing the tough things builds and builds and builds and builds. Now you're challenging yourself. So yeah. I started with one mile a day. I could run two, three miles a day. I'll go run. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. You know, and then uh, I have a cousin who live in Miami, and he trained boxers. Mm. And he was like, look, it's not about how fast you run. Because I was running a mile in, in eight, nine minutes okay. in my 40s. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's not about how fast you can run the mile. It's how, how long can you run. Mm-hmm. How yeah. long can your body be running? It's true, too. Because, you, you know, you know oh, what I mean? Go ahead. So he said when we train our boxers... Mm. They run for an hour. Mm. They're not running fast. They run and we yeah. run and it's stand up, stamina, stamina. stamina. So it's not because I'm thinking like oh, I'm fast. You mm-hmm. know, I'm I'm still young. You know, even though I'm on my forties, I'm running a mile in nine minutes, eight mm-hmm. minutes. And they're like, no, don't do that. Because they, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. The body make make sure the body has that stamina, yeah. endurance. Your body needs to it be needs able it. to do this for how long? Can you do this for? And you can do it for a long time. You know why? Us back in the day, there's a group of humans that there was no, there was no, uh, there was no guns, there was no spears. We had a, we could chase animals. It would be me, you, and a couple other guys, and we would surround animals, yeah, 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 yeah. and we would chase them until, because an animal will get tired. Yeah, yeah. A human can jog forever, so I would jog so far. And then when the, when the animal gets to a certain point, you yeah. would jog so far, a next guy, and then eventually the animal would drop yeah, down, yeah. we would all get it, yeah. and we would take our... our yeah, you're right. So, you're right. So, so. It's, we're, we're built that way yeah. to get food back in the day when right. we were hunter-gatherers and stuff right, like that. Right. There was no tools. Yeah. We had so, to chase the animals down. So that's, that's, a, that's a thing that I got out of health and fitness, man. Mm-hmm. And it saved my life. Yeah. You know, it saved my life. And I, I, and saved I speak my it. life too. For real. <laughs> like, I tell people that that's real shit. Like, yeah. it saved my life. So, you're going to keep going with it? 100%. Man, this is a lifestyle, man. Yeah. You can't just do it just flexing on. So, you know, this is. Yeah. And that's another thing. People, people misunderstand what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, here we go again with this dude over here doing, like, no, don't nobody care. But guess what? Mm-hmm. And I tell people, keep putting those up. Yeah. Keep putting those. Somebody's watching. Yeah. Someone's watching and someone is, is going to do that too. I don't care what they think. Oh, he's full of himself or whatever. No, keep doing that. No, keep doing because it. Because someone someone is being inspired. Bro, I'm, I was watching you. I got you know? inspired by you. And now I'm inspiring people. And you, I'm sure you're still you inspiring are, people. You are, dude. And I, and, I, and I love it because I remember this this girl hit me up. She uh, instant messaged me like, oh, I just went and did yoga. Should I post a video? But she was being sarcastic. Mm-hmm. Should I do what you do? Post a video? And I said, you should. Yeah. You know how many people, how many people in your family will look at that video and say, man, I need to go do something. Yeah. You don't even know. She's like, I said, I know you're trying to be funny, but mm-hmm. you should post that video. Plus, mm-hmm. I want to see you in yoga pants. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But seriously, why not? It's true, though, because people might people assume that me, the stuff that we post, we're doing it for all this glory or all this thing. But Ain't nine but ten people looking at it, and yeah. at least one of them is inspiring. I did my job. Yeah, 
the only thing, the, only, the reason why I've been telling everybody what I'm doing is because I want to grow my social media. I want to inspire people. I want to help people. I want to do something positive for the community. Yeah. I feel like I let the community down when I went to prison. My name, my, my, my picture was in the newspaper. I, at that time, I really wasn't selling drugs. I worked, I worked at the casino. I had a suit on. I was trying to change my life. Yeah. And then the FBI came, took me to jail. I was in the newspaper. I felt like... I feel like I need to start doing something more positive for the community. And that's why I wanted to have you on. I want to have this conversation because me and you got into that fight. I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure that everything was squashed between me and you and move forward from this. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I mean? for sure, man. Uh, Francisco, uh, uh, Francisco, I want to let you know that I appreciate you so much I for coming on. I appreciate you too, man. Uh, I want to, before we go, I want to see, like, what, what do you, what do you <coughs> hope? What do you hope the listeners can take from this conversation we had today? I hope the listeners see two grown men have a genuine conversation about life, experiences, uh, relationship, um, conflicts in the hood, Mm -hmm. um, living living healthy, Mm -hmm. you know. Two different worlds colliding. Yeah, you know, just understanding that. People can change. I mean, it sounds cliche. It's like uh, Rocky Four. If I can mm-hmm. change, he can. You know, but that's the truth. Yeah. But I want people to see us and, and I want people to be inspired by us and be like, these guys, wow, they, they actually, these guys actually threw, you know, threw hands at each yeah. other and here they are having a, having a genuine conversation. So yeah. I hope that good things come out of this. Yeah. And I that's why that. I agree. When you was like, man, I, I've been one. I told Vadi, I said, mm. I said, I would like to do that. I would like to have a conversation with him. Yeah. Because people don't do that. You yeah. know what people do? Oh, here comes, I'm going to go that way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why not? Why? Yeah. why I, wanted, gonna, you know what I, mean? I wanted to have this conversation because I know that um, maybe me and you weren't like complete enemies. But right. There's, I'm sure there's two Latinos in this city or, right. or on, that's going to watch. Right. They're, they're complete enemies. And maybe those two guys, when they can sit down and squash that beef or that bullshit and like like you know me and you weren't super gangsters or none of that but there was a there was a point where like that could have led to us yeah, talking to some been, gangsters yeah, yeah, and, and, right. and and got into like some bad situations yeah, yeah right so before like this conversation is good for these young men or young women yeah for for them to to, to squash the beef we don't need to that's why i want to have big yogi's garage here downtown I want to have it, so I don't want it to. I don't want it to be on the east side or the north end, because I want to anybody from the whole yeah, city yeah, yeah. to be able to come here, sit down with me, and have a conversation. Yeah. I don't want to be tied to like one like certain organization or certain thing, because I want to be able to help east side, west side, yeah, yeah. north side. I want to be able to have everyone on here and conversate and have a conversation, so we can all listen here in Toledo. That's that's a that's an awesome idea, man. I'm glad that you're doing this. I'm glad that you invited me here, and yeah. I'm glad we had this conversation. Yeah. This was good. I I appreciate you saying yes and thank you very much man i Love appreciate you so much all right guys see you later happy cinco de mayo <laughs> even though this one comes out <laughs> <I'm crazy. laughs>